BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Leviticus, chap by Ecker, chapter 23. Leviticus, chapter 23. Vamos en busca de nuestra bendición. Vamos al libro de Leviticus 23. Leviticus, chapter 23. Leviticus, capítulo 23. Going on to the next slide, everything. This is a Messianic lesson, HB004, Shavuot 2020. The bread of life is his commandments. Este es el mensaje grabado HB004 Shavuot 2020. El pan de vida son sus mandamientos. Messianic lesson HB004 Shavuot 2020. The bread of life is his commandments. Mensaje número HB004 Shavuot 2020. El pan de vida son going, sus mandamientos. Going on to the next slide. Everything you hear today will be in English. En español. Todo lo que escuches ahora será, será dicho en inglés y en español. We're going to a lot of scripture in today's Shavuot lesson. Vamos a ver mucha escritura en este día de Shavuot. And I'm only going to read it in English. Y solo la leeré en inglés. Because if I read it in Spanish, we would definitely be here till the end of Shavuot. Porque si la leo en, en español, quizá vamos a quedarnos todo el tiempo hasta al final de Shavuot. Today's Shavuot lesson will have a synopsis and three different lessons. La, 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 el mensaje de hoy tendrá la sinopsis y tres temas. I'm going to read it in English and Rebbe and Veronica is going to read it in español. Amen. What are the purposes, what are the purpose of the holy days? Why does Jehovah want us still to keep them? In this Holy Day message, we're looking at Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Some people call it Pentecost. Why is this a holy day that does not have a specific date associated with it? What is so important about counting? What is so important about bringing bread from each of, your, of our, our homes? What is the last day implications of this holy day for the entire world? Synopsis. ¿Cuál es el propósito de los días santos? ¿Por qué Jehová quiere que aún nos conservemos? En el mensaje de este día santo estaremos observando a Shavuot, la fiesta, del la fiesta de las semanas o Pentecostés. ¿Por qué es este un día santo que no tiene una fecha específica asociada con él? ¿Cuál es la importancia de contar? ¿Cuál es la importancia de traer pan de cada uno de nuestros hogares? ¿Cuál es la implicación del último día de este Día Santo para el mundo entero? Let's go on to theme number one. Lesson number one. Counting and bread. Viacra, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 7. You must bring bread from your homes for waving. Two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour baked with leaven as first fruits for Jehovah. This is a simple yet extremely deep eternal statement. How can bringing bread from each one of our homes be so significant to each person's eternity? How could two loaves of bread that I'm going to wave in the air be so integral to the master's plan of salvation? Tema 1. Conteo y el pan. Levíticos 23, 17. 
de vuestras habitaciones traeréis dos panes para ofrenda mecida que serán de dos décimas de efa de flor de harina, cocidos con levadura, con primicias para Jehová. Esta es una declaración simple pero extremadamente profunda y eterna. ¿Cómo puede ser tan importante el traer pan de cada uno de nuestros hogares para la eternidad de cada persona? ¿Cómo podrían dos barras de pan que voy a agitar o mecer en el aire ser tan integrales para el plan del maestro de salvación? Theme number two for Shavuot. The true understanding what, it, what he means now. Yokanon, John chapter 6, verse 48. I am the bread which is life. That has come. That has to do with this. Yokanon, John. Chapter 14, verse 24 to 26. Tema 2, el verdadero entendimiento de lo que significa ahora. Juan 6, 48, yo soy el pan de vida. ¿Qué tiene que ver con esto? Yohanan 14, 24 y 26, al 26. And then we're going to have a third theme in today's lesson. Wow, now I truly understand it. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. At one of these gatherings, he instructed them not to leave Yerushalayim. But to wait for what the Father promised, which you heard about from me. Tema 3. Wow. Ahora realmente lo entiendo. Hechos 1, versículo 4. Y estando juntos, les mandó que no se fueran de Jerusalén, siendo que esperasen la promesa del Padre, la cual les dijo, oísteis de mí. Okay, let's turn to Leviticus, Viacra, chapter 23, verse 15 through 17. Vamos a Levíticos, capítulo 23, versículos 15. 15 al 17. We're going to go on a great journey. Vamos a ir en un gran viaje. Uh, about this incredible day. Acerca de este día tan increíble. And the first thing we're going to start learning about is counting. Y lo primero que vamos a aprender es acerca de contar. Why do we got to count 50 days? ¿Por qué debemos contar 15 días, 50 días? Let's read verse 15 through 17. Leamos los versículos 15 al 17. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring a sheep for waving your account. Seven full weeks until the day after the seventh week, you're to count 50 days, and then you are to present a new grain offering to Yehovah. You must bring bread from your homes for waving two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour baked with leaven as first fruits of Yehovah. Okay, so we're going back to verse number 15. Vamos a través a leer el versículo 15. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheep for waving, you are to count seven full weeks. Amen? Amen. So the day of rest, it says. El día de res, del descanso, dice. So uh, in the Hebrew, it says the day after Shabbat. In the Hebrew, it says the day after de Shabbat. Now, every week has a Shabbat in it. Cada semana tiene un Shabbat. And when we're going to look at the fourth commandment later, y cuando vamos a revisar el cuarto mandamiento, the seventh day says Hashabbat. El, el séptimo día es Hashabbat. Okay, so the weekly Shabbat is different than a holy day Shabbat. El Shabbat semanal es diferente de un día santo como Shabbat. So let's look at verse 15 again. Veamos el versículo 15 otra vez. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheep for waving, you're to count seven full weeks. Amen? So that would be the first day of the week. Este sería el primer día de la semana. So today is the first day of the week. El día de hoy es el primer día de la semana. Okay, the first day of the week is always Sunday to us. El primer día de la semana siempre es el domingo para nosotros. It is not Monday. No es el día lunes. So the first day of the week is Sunday, that we know as Sunday. El primer día de la semana para nosotros es el domingo, el día que conocemos como domingo. Now what's important about understanding this day. Lo que es importante acerca de este día. Is we got to first understand Pesach, Passover. Es que debemos entender primero la Pascua. Because the, 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 the Moed, the holy day of Pesach. Porque el Moed, el Día Santo de Pesach, has a set date, but not a set day. Tiene un tiempo apuntado, pero no un día señalado. It is the 14th day of the first month at sundown. Es el día 14 del primer mes a la caída del sol. So that could be any day of the week. It could be Monday through Sunday. Y puede ser eso cualquier día de la semana, de lunes a domingo. 
But it is always the 14th day at evening. Pero siempre es el día 14 al atardecer. So Shabbat might be one day away, it might be six days away. Shabbat quizá puede ser un día o, de, o seis días después. So you need to understand that that part about Pesach. Tienes que entender que esa parte de la Pascua. Because look at verse 15 again. Veamos al versículo 15. From the day after the day of rest, that is the day you bring the sheaf for waving, it accounts seven full weeks. Amen? Amen. Now each of the holy days has a, a name. Uno, cada uno de los días santos tiene su nombre. Pesach is Pesach, Passover. Pesach es la, la, la Pascua. Hag Matzah is a feast of unleavened bread. Hag Matzah es la fiesta de los panes sin levadura. Bikurim is Bikurim, the first fruit. Bikurim es Bikurim, los primeros frutos. See, they have names. Tienen nombres. Bikurim is not Passover. Bikurim no es la Pascua. Okay. Because, you know, the Jews, once again, were confusing everybody again this year. And then they're doing Shavuot for three days. Y están celebrando Shavuot por tres días. And uh, I was walking around in the supermarket on Thursday. Y estaba caminando en el supermercado jueves. And all the Jews were walking around buying flowers. I don't understand. Y los judíos estaban comprando flores y no lo entendía. Would you all get married on the same day? Se casaron todos en el mismo día. I was like, I got to look it up. So somebody help me with, what is this? Why are they all buying flowers? Because they all said it was Shavuot. I thought it was on the day after the day of rest. I thought it was you start counting in Bikarim. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to learn about counting. Vamos a aprender acerca de contar. Because uh, evidently the Jews don't know how to count. Porque evidentemente los judíos no saben contar. Or they're starting from the wrong day. O comenzaron desde el día equivocado. That's what it is, they're starting from the wrong day. Eso es lo que, que comenzaron el día equivocado. And we're going to learn from Scripture about the right day. Vamos a aprender de la Escritura acerca del día correcto. Because don't follow the rabbis, follow God, follow mm -hmm. Jehovah. Porque no sigan a los rabinos, sino sigan a Dios, a Jehovah. Don't follow Talmud, follow Torah. No sigan el Talmud, sino la Torah. So let's look at verse 15 and 16. Veamos los versos 15 y 16 otra vez. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks. Until the day after the seventh week, you are to count 50 days. And then you are to present a new grain offering to Jehovah. Okay. Now in verse 15 and 16. En el versículo 15 y 16. We got a theme going on. Tenemos una idea. And the theme is counting. Y la idea es contar. And the word counting is H5608. It is the Hebrew root word safar. It means to count. Para el hebreo, para la palabra contar es H5608. La palabra safar significa contar. So why do we got to count? ¿Por qué tenemos que contar? If every Pesach you, that you start counting there, si en cada Pesach comienzas a contar, then Shavuot would have a set day, right? Entonces Shavuot tuviera un día ya, ya eh, indicado. So Jehovah would say, on that day, you're going to have Shavuot. Entonces Jehovah hubiera dicho, en ese día vas a celebrar Shavuot. Why do you got to count? Porque tienes que contar. Because it would be a set day. Day. Porque sería una fecha ya, ya indicada. I would always argue with my rabbi about this. Siempre peleaba con mi rabino acerca de esto. Every time I'd say I'd raise my hand, he'd, he'd roll his eyes at me. Cada vez que levantaba mi mano para preguntar, le torcía sus ojos. I just want to know the truth, man. Yo solo quiero saber la verdad. If we, if we, why are we counting? ¿Por qué contamos? Why are we counting? ¿Por qué estamos contando? If it's got a set day. Si ya tiene un día señalado. So to get to Shavuot, Entonces, para a Shavuot you gotta count, you know, you gotta count seven days, seven weeks, uh, 50 days. Tienes que contar seis, siete semanas, 50 días. So 50 days is longer than a month. Entonces, 50 días es más largo que un mes. Because if you got a 50 day month, you're living on a different planet. But also, if it's 50 days, Pero si también es 50 días, it's longer than a cycle of a moon. Es también más largo del tiempo del ciclo de la luna. But it's not two full moon cycles. Pero no son dos ciclos lunares. It's going to be almost two full, full cycles. Van a ser casi dos ciclos lunares. But it's not going to be 
two cycles. Pero no va a ser dos ciclos completos. And remember, they didn't have Outlook, you know, to go. They didn't have paper calendars to go look. Y recuerda que no tenía ni, ni calendarios de papel para observarlo. You know, somebody asked me what day is it, I check my phone. <laughs> Alguien me pregunta qué día es, yo chequeo mi teléfono. Now, how, many, how many other people do that? ¿Cuántos hacen eso? I have no idea what today's day, well, I do today's, is, but usually I don't. Do you know it every day? <laughs> so there. Usualmente no sé. No sé qué día es. Hoy día sé qué día es, pero usualmente no. Let me check the let me check the cameras. How many people know what day the week what what the date is without checking their phone? ¿Cuántos de ustedes saben cuál es cuál fecha tiene el día sin chequear sus teléfonos? One, two, the rest are like I got to check my phone. El resto dice tengo que chequear mi teléfono. Okay, so there's something very interesting that Jehovah wants us to learn about counting. Hay algo muy interesante que Jehová quiere que aprendamos acerca de contar. So we got to seek the word Entonces, tenemos que buscar en la palabra to understand or grasp the meaning behind counting. Para entender o um, ad, alcanzar la idea acerca de esto. So we can get a better understanding about why we're bringing bread. Para así podemos entender la idea de por qué debemos traer el pan. Why each home has to wave it from each home. Por qué es que cada hogar debe mecer este pan. Or when we can meet in congregation, which some of America can. You know, como si hubiéramos podido reunirnos en la congregación como en algunos lugares en América pueden. But here in communist New Jersey. Pero aquí en la en New Jersey comunista. Oh, uh, we, 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 we have ways that we can't meet at the congregation. No podemos reunirnos en la congregación. Okay. But normally you would bring bread from your home to wave at the congregation or at the temple. Normalmente tú deberías traer pan a tu congregación o al templo. The goal is this. La, la, el, 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 la meta es esta. What you're going to receive from the kingdom. Lo que vas a recibir del reino. At the end of the counting 50 days. ¿Qué vas a recibir del reino al final de los 50 días? And at the end of the 50 days. Al final de los 50 días. You're going to you're going to either receive this covenant. Vas o a recibir este pacto. The covenant's going to be given. El pacto va a ser entregado. And it's going to be give, it's going to be used for or against you on the last day. Y va a ser usado Para ti, o a tu favor, o en contra tuyo en el último día de, de, de tu vida. It's going to be used for or against you. Va a ser usado en contra o a tu favor. On the last day. En el último día. So let us begin our journey to the promised land. Comencemos esta lección con la tierra prometida. Like, why are we counting? ¿Por qué estamos contando? You know, why, why did Jehovah just say... Uh, on the third month, on the eighth day, you're going to have the Feast of Shavuot. Para tener la fiesta de Shavuot. But no, we got to count. Pero no, tenemos que contar. Every other holy day Todo otro día santo has a date. Tiene ya una fecha. Okay, every you know, holy day, you know, Pesach has a date. Todo día, eh, todo día santo. Pesach, por ejemplo, tiene su fecha. Hagmata has a date. Hagmata también tiene su fecha. Bikurim does not have a date. Bikurim no tiene fecha. That means Shavuot doesn't have a date. Significa que Shavuot no tiene fecha. But Yom Teruah has a date. Yom Teruah tiene una fecha. First day of the seventh month. El primer día del, segundo, del séptimo mes. Yom Kippur has a date. Yom Kippur también tiene fecha. Tenth day of the seventh month. Es el décimo día del séptimo mes. Sukkot has a day. Sukkot tiene de fecha. No, why am I counting? ¿Por qué estoy contando? Let's, let's go on with our theme of counting. Digamos acerca de esta idea de contar. Let's read verse 15 and 16 again. Leamos los versículos 15 y 16 otra vez. Like we're Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 and 16 again. Leviticus capítulo 23, versículos 15 y 16. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheep for waving, you're to count seven full weeks until the day after the day, 
day after the seventh week, you're to count 50 days, and then you are to present a new grain offering to Jehovah. Amen? Okay, so you know what this means if you had read the previous verses in chapter 23. Because in verse 1 through 14, it goes over the other spring, spring holy days. But what we do notice in verse 15 and 16. Pero lo que notamos en los versículos 15 y 16. There is a theme that we were talking about before. Es una idea que de lo que hemos estado hablando anteriormente. The word count is there twice. La palabra contar está está escrito dos veces. Now, those of us who are believers in Messiah Yeshua, aquellos de nosotros que somos creyentes en el Mesías Yeshua, we put a lot of uh, we put our whole lives on John 3, verses 1 through 21. Ponemos nuestra vida en Juan 23, versículos 1. No, John 3. Juan 3, Juan 3. Versículos 1. Ah, 21. 21. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the only time we're going to say it. You know, it's interesting. Salvation is not in all the other Gospels. Es interesante que la salvación no está en otros evangelios. And it's only talked about in that way. Once. Y solamente se habla de esa manera una sola. And we put our, you know, our whole lives on that that passage. Y tenemos nuestras vidas alrededor de ese pasaje. But here in verse 15 and 16. Pero aquí en el versículo, en los versículos 15 y 16. Jehovah told us, he said the word count twice. Jehovah dijo la palabra contar dos veces. And when Jehovah mm -hmm. says something like that, you should really 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 take notice of it y cuando Jehová dice una palabra dos veces debes realmente poner atención but in Hebrew thought process pero en el proceso de pensamiento judío you, hebreo, need, you need to understand this in, when you're reading the whole of the Bible cuando estás leyendo toda la Biblia you got to start thinking like a biblical Hebrew tienes que comenzar a pensar como un hebreo bíblico and once something is the way, the way you think about this Una vez que piensas de la manera, is something called law for, of first reference. Es algo que se llama la ley de la primera referencia. Once a word is established in the scriptures, that meaning does not change. Ese significado no cambia. Okay, once that word is established, Una vez que esa palabra ha sido establecida, it does not change its understanding. No cambia su significado. You know, the word cool in English. La palabra. Frío. Frío. Templado. Chévere. Templado. I'm going with chévere. Okay, chévere. Okay. You know, that person's cool. Esa persona es chévere. Okay. <clears throat> it could mean chévere. It could mean like that person's like, I like that person. Puede, puede significar que esa persona es simpática o chévere, me cae bien. Or that person's cool. O que esa persona está fría. Uh, get that o person está, a coat. Que le, den, que le den un abrigo a esa persona. Okay. That's not the way we read our, the Bible. No es esa la manera que nosotros vemos la Biblia. Because Hebrew is a very precise language. Porque el hebreo es una, un lenguaje muy preciso. Not modern Hebrew. No el hebreo moderno. Biblical Hebrew is a very precise, strong, perfect language. Pero el hebreo bíblico es un lenguaje fuerte y preciso. It is the only perfect language in the world. Es un lenguaje perfecto en el mundo. How could you say that Hebrew is a perfect language? ¿Cómo puedes decir que el hebreo es un lenguaje perfecto? Because God gave us Torah in Hebrew. Porque Dios nos dio la Torah en hebreo. Not Aramaic or any other language like Greek or anything like that. No en arameo ni en otro lenguaje como griego, nada de eso. I mean, Greek is a pretty, it is second to Hebrew. El hebreo, el griego es segundo lenguaje del hebreo. But Hebrew is the perfect language. Pero el hebreo es el mensaje, el lenguaje perfecto. So we're, we, we just, let's read verse 15 and 16 again. Leamos otra vez el versículo 15 y 16. And then we're going to go to the law of first reference. Y vamos a ver a la ley de la primera referencia. From the day after the day of rest, that is, from the day you bring the sheaf for waving, you are to count seven full weeks until the day after the seventh week. 
You're to count 50 days, and then you are to present a new grain offering to Jehovah. So we see the word count in that passage twice. Vamos, vemos la palabra contar en ese pasaje dos veces. So let's establish what the word counting means. Entonces establezcamos qué significa la palabra contar. Go to Bereshit Genesis chapter 13. Ahora vamos a ir a Génesis capítulo 13. We're going to the law of first reference. Vamos a ver la, prim la ley de la primera referencia. Law of first reference, Bereshit Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 16. Ley de la primera referencia, Génesis of Bereshit capítulo 13, versículos 14 a 16. Genesis 13, verse 14 to 16. Genesis 13, versículos 14 a 16. For those that are new in the scriptures, that's in the beginning of the Bible. Para aquellos que son nuevos en la escritura, ese libro está al comienzo de la Biblia. Okay, Bereshit Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 16 says, Jehovah said to Avram, after Lot had moved away from him, look all around you from where you are, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. All the land you see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth, so that if a person can count the specks of dust, on the earth, then your descendants can be counted. Okay, now this is the law of first reference. We see the word count twice, count and counted. Esta es la palabra, la, 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 la ley de la primera referencia. Vemos la palabra aquí, contar y contado. So we need to understand what that those verses are about. Tenemos que entender de qué se tratan estos verbos. Okay, to understand the law of first reference. Para entender la ley de la primera referencia. So that you'll understand why Jehovah says in Leviticus and Bayekar 23. Tenemos que entender por qué Jehovah dice en Leviticus capítulo 23. What, what is involved in why we're counting? ¿Por qué? What is involved? ¿Qué, está en, qué, qué tiene que ver? To as to why we are counting. A la, a la, al motivo de por qué tenemos que contar. Because we need to understand this from the law of first reference. Porque tenemos que entender esto de acuerdo a la ley de la primera referencia. In the law of first reference. En la ley de la primera referencia. We have counting has to do with a promise of owning some land. El contar tiene la tiene que ver con la promesa de tener de de, de tener propiedad que es de uno. The promise of owning some land. La promesa de, de, de tener alguna, de, de ser dueño de una tierra. It's interesting that we're talking about this after yesterday. Es interesante de lo que estamos hablando después de ayer. Okay, and that today is Shavuot. Y que hoy es Shavuot. Okay, so the law of first reference, it says in, the, in verse 15 and 16. La ley de la primera referencia, dice en los versículos 14 y 16. Let's look at verse 15 and 16. Leamos otra vez. All the land you will see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. I'll make your descendants as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. So the person can count the specks of dust on the earth, and your descendants can be counted. Amen? Amen. Okay, and in verse 14, we, had, we had talked about him owning the land all around him, Abraham. Owning the land all around him. In el versículo 14, estábamos hablando que Abraham sería dueño de toda la tierra que ve. So... Counting has to do with a promise that lasts forever. El contar tiene que ver con la promesa que dura para siempre. Counting has a promise that you're going to own land. El contar tiene una promesa que vas a ser dueño de tierra. So let's write that down. Escribamos. Counting. Contar. As a promise of owning your own land. Como promesa de que te serás propietario de tu propia tierra. Counting has a promise of owning your own land. El uh, contar tiene una promesa de que serás propietario de tu propia de una tierra. Counting has a promise of owning your own land. Contar es eh, tiene la promesa de que serás propietario de una tierra. And then write down also counting has to do with a promise that lasts forever. Contar también tiene que ver con una promesa que es duradera. Counting as a promise that lasts forever. O una promesa, contar también tiene que ver, 
Contar tiene que ver con una promesa que será eterna. Counting has to do with a promise that lasts forever. Contar tiene que ver con una promesa que durará para siempre. So when Jehovah says count the days from Bikarim to Shavuot. Si Jehovah dice que cuenten los días desde Bikarim hasta Shavuot. It's about a promise that's going to happen. Es, se trata de una promesa que va a suceder. It's about a promise that's going to happen. Se trata de una promesa que va a suceder. It's about land that you're going to receive. Se trata de la tierra que vas a recibir. How many people would love to own some land? ¿Cuántos quieren tener tierra? Okay. Everybody wants to own some land. Todos quieren ser dueños de alguna tierra. But the other thing that we read in that Bereshit, in a Genesis passage, Pero otra cosa que leímos en, el pasaje de Genesis, in chapter 13 there, en el capítulo 13, it's about your descendants. Es acerca de tus descendientes. In those verses that we read, en los versos que leímos, it's about having descendants. Se trata de que vas a tener descendencia. So that means you're going to have children. Significa que vas a tener hijos. If you're counting like God says. Si estás contando como Dios dice. Like Jehovah says, the eternal one, bless be his glorious name. Como dice el eterno, bendito sea su nombre. He says you're going to have descendants. Dice que vas a tener descendencia. Now, Abraham had to wait quite a while to have some descendants. Ahora, Abraham no pudo, no tuvo descendencia por un buen tiempo. But he, he needed to learn something. Pero él tuvo que aprender algunas cosas. Yeah, she's my sister. Sí, ella es mi hermana. Dude, you need to learn how to trust. Hermano, tienes que aprender a, aprender a confiar. You know, Jehovah is saying here that I'm going to give you descendants. Jehovah le dijo aquí que va a tener descendencia. But you got to trust in God's promises. Pero tienes que confiar en las promesas de Dios. So this promise of counting means you will have children. En esa promesa de contar también es que tendrás hijos. Okay. The other thing about this promise about counting. Algo más acerca de esta promesa acerca de contar. Is you're going to live securely. Es que vas a vivir en seguridad. Like the world in America was going crazy yesterday, and I felt very, I, I, I was, I had shalom yesterday. Mm -hmm. Como por ejemplo, ayer América estaba volviéndose loca, y yo en mi casa estaba sintiendo shalom. Because when I checked the news after Shabbat was over, I'm like, wow. Que cuando vi las noticias después de que terminó Shabbat, me sorprendí. I mean, one town away from us was having a big situation. Nork was, oh. Nork was. They were having a big situation. Una, un pueblo que queda junto al de nosotros, hubo una situación en uh, la ciudad de Nueva que estaba en problemas. But the, it wasn't on fire. Pero no tenía fuego. The people were demonstrating, but they were, it wasn't on fire. La gente estaba protestando, pero no, no, no había fuego. Now, Philadelphia was on fire. Philadelphia estaba en bajo fuego. The city of brotherly love was not having any love at all. La ciudad de la hermandad, de, de la hermandad, no tenía ningún amor a la hermandad. Counting wow. has everything to do with living securely. Contar tiene mucho que ver con vivir seguramente. Counting means that you're going to have food and prosperity. Contar significa que tendrás alimento y prosperidad. That means counting the days. Con, significa que contar los días. You're going to have the proper amount of rain. Vas a tener el amount apropiado de lluvia. And you're not going to have a famine. Y no vas a tener hambrunas. That the land is just going to keep producing even in your, the year of Shemitah. <coughs> que la tierra va a seguir produciendo incluso en el, día de, en el tiempo de Shemitah. Let's look at verse 16 again. Versículo verse, 16. Veamos el versículo 16. Verse 16. Bereshit 13, verse 16. And I will make your descendants as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. So that if a person can count the specks of dust on the earth, then your descendants, like Asher, will be talking and talking and we counted and counted. Okay. <laughs> then your descendants will be counted. Okay. In our first look at trying to understand about counting. En nuestro primer entendimiento que estamos uh, comprendiendo lo contar. And why this holy day like, is not like any other holy day. Porque este día santo no es como los otros días santos. No other holy day has counting involved. No otro día santo tiene, um, se debe contar. Okay. This holy day has counting involved. En este día santo tenemos que contar. 
And we see in verse 16 something also very amazing. También vemos en el versículo 16 algo sorprendente. In verse 16, en el versículo 16, it talks about great prosperity. Habla acerca de gran prosperidad. How many people would like great prosperity? ¿Cuántos quisieran gran prosperidad? I can use some of, some of that, baby. Aquí podemos utilizar un poco de eso. I think everybody in America could use a little of that right now. Yo creo que en América necesitan un poquito de todo eso. But the other part about verse 16, Pero la otra parte del 16 that we spoke a little bit about, we spoke a little bit about, hablamos un poco. it talks about fertility. Habla de fertilidad. There are a lot of people right now that can't have children. Hay mucha gente ahora que no pueden tener hijos. Um, you know, for many different, you know, uh, sinful reasons. Por muchas diferentes razones pecaminosas. But Verse 16 tells us that you will have children. That means you're going to be fertile. Pero el versículo 16 nos dice que tendrás hijos, que serás fértil. If you're doing what God tells you to do. Si es que haces lo que Dios te manda hacer. Or if you do what Jehovah says. Porque si haces lo que Jehovah dice. And you get to Shavuot. Y llegas a Shavuot. On the right day. En el día correcto. On the right day. En el día correcto. And Shavuot is not three days. Porque Shavuot no es tres días. It's one day. Es solamente un día. Then you're going to be blessed with many descendants. Entonces serás bendecido con muchos descendientes. Now why, why do you want to have many descendants? ¿Por qué quieres tener muchos descendientes? Because when people think of attacking you. Porque cuando la gente piensa en atacarte. They're going to think twice about attacking you. Pensarán dos veces antes de atacarte. Because... You got a lot of people to help fight with you. Porque vas a tener mucha gente que te va a ayudar a pelear junto a ti. Especially in ancient times, you needed to have a large clan. Especialmente en tiempos antiguos, necesitabas tener un clan muy grande. Because the people thought that they could outnumber you and kill you. Porque la gente pensó que podía sobrepasarte en número y matarte. They would attack you. Ellos te atacarían. So here Jehovah says in the verse 16 that we just read. Aquí Jehovah nos está diciendo en el versículo 16. The understanding of, of counting is you're going to have descendants. La entende, el entendimiento de contar es que vas a tener hijos. And people are not going to attack you because you're going to be numerous. Y no, la gente no te va a atacar porque vas a ser grande en número. So that's our first promise that we look at in counting while we were counting for 50 days. Esa es la promesa que estamos mirando en acerca de contar los 50 días. Let's take a look at the next part of counting. Veamos la otra parte acerca de contar. Turn to Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 30, verse 33. Vámonos a Genesis, capítulo 30, versículo 33. Genesis, chapter 30, Bereshit, 30, verse 33. Genesis, capítulo 30, versículo 33. And this verse ties together with the lesson from yesterday. Y esto se tiene que ver con la lección de ayer. How we were talking about integrity. De que estábamos hablando acerca de la integridad. Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 30, verse 33. Genesis, Bereshit, capítulo 30, versículo 33. And I will let my integrity stand as my witness against me in the future. When you come to look at, over the animals constituting my wages, Every goat that isn't speckled or spotted, and every sheep that isn't brown, will count as stolen. Amen? So yesterday we were talking about integrity. Ayer estábamos hablando de la integridad. So those of us that are following Shavuot today, Aquellos que están siguiendo Shavuot hoy, we have the integrity of the Lord. Tenemos la, integri uh, la integridad del Señor. What does the integrity of the Lord mean? ¿Qué significa la integridad del Señor? Let's take a look at the word integrity in English, and Reverend Sombronica is going to do it in Spanish. Okay. Integrity, H6666, and is Zedikea. It means justice, righteousness. Para la palabra integridad es H6666. La palabra Zedikea, la definición es justicia, rectitud. So... Integrity, la integridad, when you're counting from Bikarim to Shavuot, cuando estás contando desde Bikarim hasta Shavuot, you're adding righteousness to your walk. 
tú estás adhiriendo justicia a tu caminar. Because you're doing what the Lord told you to do. Porque el Señor te dijo que hagas lo que debes hacer. And then when you pass from this life to the next life. Y cuando pases de esta vida a la otra. On the last day. En el último día. The Lord's going to give justice to each and every person that lived. El Señor va a dar justicia a cada persona que ha, sido, que ha estado viva. Justice can be good or justice can be bad. La justicia puede ser buena o puede ser mala. Because you're going to get what you got coming to you. Porque vas a obtener lo que viene hacia ti. So let's read verse 33 again. Leamos el versículo 33 otra vez. Now I will let my integrity stand as, as witness against me in, my, in the future. When you come to look over the animals constituting my wages, every goat that isn't speckled or spotted, and every sheep that isn't brown will count, will count as stolen by me. So counting is about your righteousness. Contar significa también de tu rectitud o justicia. Now, if you're, you're righteous, si tú eres justo, then you're going to get reward points. Entonces vas a tener puntos de premio. How many people want reward points? O puntos de compensación. ¿Cuántos uh -huh. quieren tener puntos de compensación? I definitely want reward points. Yo definitivamente quiero estos puntos de compensación. Now why do you want reward points? ¿Y para qué quieres estos puntos de compensación? Reward points and lead points from your reward points from Jehovah lead to more land. Los puntos de compensación de Jehovah significa que vamos a tener más tierra. Reward points from Jehovah lead to more land. Los puntos de compensación de Jehovah significa que vamos a tener más tierra. I mean, how many people would just like a little little piece of land? ¿Cuántos quisieran un pedacito de tierra? You know, where you can at least put a garden, not 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 on, not on on your deck. Para poder poner un jardín y no en tu balcón. But actually in the ground. Pero en la tierra mismo. How many people would like not just a little land, but like a lot of land? ¿Cuántos quisieran no solo un poquito de tierra, sino mucha tierra? Well, then you got to do what Jehovah said. Pero tienes que hacer entonces lo que Jehovah te manda. Because then you get reward points. Entonces ahí obtendrás estos puntos de compensación. And reward points from Jehovah lead to more land. Estos puntos de compensación llevan a más tierra. And reward points lead to more food. Y estos puntos de compensación también te lleva al que te vas a tener comida. How many people would love not to go shopping? ¿A cuántos les gustaría no ir a hacer compras? Like just go out to your garden and go shopping. Como por ejemplo solo salir a tu jardín y no irte de compras. You know, even, even if it is vegetables. Incluso si es vegetales. O broccoli. Or broccoli. It's demonic. Okay. So counting leads to more food. Contar nos lleva a más comida. But not just vegetables. Pero no solo vegetales. Leads to more animal food. Lleva también a más comida para los animales. More sheep, more cattle. Más corderos, más uh, ganado. Righteousness leads to more animals. La rectitud o la justicia lleva, nos lleva a tener más animales. Righteousness leads to more safety. La justicia nos lleva a, a tener más seguridad. Righteousness leads to more money. La justicia nos lleva a más dinero. Because if you got lot, lots of vegetables, you can sell what you're not going to eat. Porque si tienes muchos vegetales, no, tú puedes vender lo que no vas a comer. Right? And you can sell what you're not going to eat. Puedes vender lo que no vas a comer. You know, Darwin can get more potato chips. Darwin puede comerse más papitas fritas. Um, and he can make it with his own oil because he'll have prosperity. Y puede hacerlo con su propio aceite porque va a tener prosperidad. Okay, and then you can have your own, you can kill your own cow and have some steaks. Y puedes matar a tu propia vaca y comer uh, uh, carne. And then what, what, what you don't use, you can sell and make more money. Y lo que no utilices puedes venderlo y comer, uh, tener más dinero. Counting shows the Father muestra al padre that you are obedient. Que tú eres obediente. So when someone says you stole something, Cuando alguien te diga a ti que robaste algo, or they lie about you, o mientan acerca de ti, no one's going to believe them. Nadie les va a creer. Because counting means the king is going to defend you. Porque contar también significa que el rey te va a defender. How many people want the king to defend? ¿Cuántos quieren que el rey los defienda? Because he's never lost a case in court. Porque jamás ha perdido un caso en la corte. Mm -hmm. 
Is that true? He sort of owns the court. <laughs> Él es el dueño de la corte. He's okay. sort of like the judge, but he's a righteous judge. Él es como un juez, pero es un juez justo. All right, let's learn more about counting. Aprendamos más acerca de contar. Let's, let's turn to our next reference, Leviticus, Viagra, chapter 15, verse 13. Vamos a nuestra próxima referencia, Levíticos, capítulo 15, versículo 13. So, counting is about having land. Contar significa acerca de tener tierra. Counting is about prosperity. Contar significa acerca de tener prosperidad. Now let's take a look at the next reference of counting. Vamos a ver a la referencia, a otra referencia de contar. Viagra, Leviticus, chapter 15, verse 13. Levíticos, capítulo 15, versículo 13. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 13. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 13. When a person with a discharge has become free of it, is to count seven days for his purification. Then he is to wash his clothes and bathe his body in running water. After that, he will be clean. Okay, so we're talking about purification. Estamos hablando acerca de la purificación. Well, purification is not only for women with their neida. La purificación no es solamente para las mujeres que tienen su neida. This, in this reference, we have men who have a discharge. En este caso, tenemos también hombres que están teniendo una, una, una eyaculación. Such as, uh, you know, vomit, vomiting or diarrhea. You know, people do get sick. O a veces tienen vómito, diarrea y se enferman. But after your... Does he ever shut up? <laughs> He's singing the Shabbat song. Okay, sorry about the noise, but Asher is awake today. He's singing Shabbat, Shabbat. Okay. All right, so let's read verse 13 again, so maybe you can hear me this time. <laughs> I'm hearing him through the... I don't know why I have the headphones on, because you're next to me. Okay, so Leviticus chapter 15, verse 13. Leviticus capítulo 15, versículo 13. When a person with a discharge has become free of it, he is to count seven days for his purification. Then he is to wash his clothes and bathe his body in running water. After that, he will be clean. Amen? This reference in why Jehovah wants us to count 50 days. Esta referencia de cuál de que tiene que ver con contar 50 días. This third reference that we're reading about to, today. Este, esta tercera referencia la que estamos uh, leyendo hoy. Because we're at the 50 day mark. We started counting in Bikurim and now it's Shavuot. Porque desde la, la de que comenzamos a contar en Bikurim hasta Shavuot. It's about purification. Se trata acerca de la purificación. Counting reminds us about what the, what we receive de lo que recibimos and what covenant we get from the King of Kings y que, que pacto obtenemos de parte del Rey de Reyes. Um, this covenant that we get on Shavuot. Este pacto que obtenemos en Shavuot. That's why it's so sad that the, the, the Jewish people are doing three days. Por eso es que es triste que los judíos estén celebrando esto por tres días. Because he spoke from Har Sinai, the mountain of Sinai, once. Porque él habló desde Har Sinai una sola vez. He didn't speak for three days to the people. Él no habló por tres días a la gente. And it's very important for us to get the day right. Y es importante para nosotros que entendamos el día correcto. Counting reminds us that we receive a covenant. El contar nos recuerda que hemos recibido un pacto. Counting reminds us about purification. Contar nos recuerda acerca de la purificación. It reminds us about the covenant. Nos recuerda acerca del pacto. And what counsel we receive when we open up the covenant. Y qué consejería recibimos cuando abrimos el pacto. That's why I teach the law to everybody. Por eso es que enseño la ley a todos. Because it's about values. Porque se trata acerca de los valores. See, the Ten Commandments that we get, that we receive today. Los diez mandamientos que recibimos hoy. It's not about theology. No se tratan acerca de teología. It's about 
values. Se trata acerca de valores. It's about a covenant. Se trata acerca de un pacto. That has values. Que tiene valores. And the, the, the counsel will we receive from the word about those values. El consejo que recibiremos acerca de esos valores. How each year when we count from Bikarim. Como cada año cuando contamos Bikarim. The day of first fruit. Desde el primer día, el día de los frutos. De los frutos de, okay, hold on. El día de los primeros frutos. Mm -hmm. So we count to the 50th day for Shavuot. Y contamos hasta el día 50 de Shavuot. It's about each day of purification. Se trata de cada día de purificación. Because Jehovah's word is pure. Porque la palabra de Jehovah es pura. Counting reminds us. Contarnos recuerda. That if we want to be found righteous on the last day. Que si queremos ser encontrados justos en el último día. Listen to this carefully. Escuchen a esto atentamente. Counting reminds us that if we want to be found righteous on the last day, we got to be free of our discharge. Because let's read verse 13 again. Leamos el versículo 13 otra vez. Chapter 15, verse 13. Capítulo 15, versículo 13. When a person with a discharge has become free of it, he is to count seven days for his purification. Then he is to wash his clothes, wash his clothes, and bathe his body in running water. After that, he will be clean. Amen. Counting reminds us that we're free of discharge. Estamos libres de flujo. That we're not unrighteous anymore que ya no somos injustos más. because if you're going to be found holy Porque si se te va a a ti como santo, on the last day I'm making a very big point of on the last day you have to be free of discharge tú tienes que estar libre de flujo. counting reminds us of, recuerda, of discharge de un flujo. Now, not just discharge that's coming out of your body, no solo de un flujo que sale de tu cuerpo, but getting rid of stuff in your life pero de cosas en tu vida, that makes you unholy. Que te hacen, that makes you unholy. Que no te hacen impuro. So, from Bikarim to Shavuot, Entonces, desde Bikarim hasta Shavuot, the Lord is saying, discharge the stuff that you don't, that he doesn't like. Well, el Señor te dice, deshacete de las cosas que no están bien para tu vida. See, if you're, if you're having a discharge. Si tienes una, un flujo. Or if you have stuff in your life. O si tienes algo en tu vida. And you try to enter the promised land. Not yeah. in Israel here, but the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. Estás tratando de entrar a la tierra prometida, no al Israel de aquí, sino a la nueva Jerusalén que viene del cielo. You got to be free of discharge. Tú tienes que estar libre de flujos. So during this time that we were counting, durante este tiempo que estamos contando, you were supposed to discharge stuff. Se supone que tú debes de, 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 um, de sacar discharge cosas. Thing, discharge things. Sacar cosas. That's going to keep you away from his holiness. The more sin that you have. El más pecado que tienes, or any sin that you have. O el pecado que tengas, that you're actively sinning against his kingdom. Que estás activamente pecando en contra de su reino, that's going to put up a barrier between you and his holiness. Eso va a poner una barrera entre tú y su santidad. So you're counting in this, this, this reference that we just looked at about counting. En esta referencia que acabamos de ver acerca de contar. Each day you're getting closer to receiving the commandments. Cada día te vas acercando a recibir los mandamientos. Renewing your marriage vow to him. Re, re, reanudando tu voto matrimonial con él. So you got to get rid of this stuff in your life. Entonces tienes que de, de, deshacerte de estas cosas que están dentro de ti. That's going to keep you away from the kingdom and his holiness. 
que te van a tener a mantener lejos del reino y de su santidad. Let's go on to the next reference. Turn to Bamidbar Numbers chapter 3 verse 15. Vámonos a Números a Bamidbar capítulo 3 versículo 15. Numbers chapter 3 verse 15. Números capítulo 3 versículo 15. Numbers, Bamidbar, chapter 3, verse 15. Numbers, capítulo 3, versículo 15. Hopefully you're learning a lot about Shavuot. Espero que estén aprendiendo algo de Shavuot. It's a very interesting lesson that you gave me. Es una lección muy interesante la que me dio. Numbers, Bamidbar, 3, verse 15. Bamidbar, número 3, versículo 15. Take a census of the tribe of Levi or Levi by clans and families. Count every male a month old or over. Amen. Counting these 50 days estos 50 días. reminds each home a cada casa and each person y a cada in that home en esa, y a cada en esa casa. that we are supposed to be a nation of priests. Que se supone que debemos ser una nación sacerdotal. Looking at America over the last 48 hours, Si hemos visto América por los últimos 48 horas. We are certainly not a nation of priests. Y ciertamente no somos una nación sacerdotal. You know, we are certainly not a nation of priests. Es cierto que no somos una nación de sacerdotes. But we are supposed to be a nation of priests. Pero se supone que debemos ser una nación de sacerdotes. Counting 50 days. Contar 50 días. Reminds the body of Messiah. Recuerda al cuerpo del Mesías. That our homes en nuestras casas. and the people in our homes y la gente en nuestras casas. that we're supposed to be a nation of priests. Que se supone que debemos ser una nación de we're supposed to be a nation of workers or Levites for Elohim. Debemos ser una, una nación de sacerdotes, de trabajadores levitas para Elohim. We're supposed to be Levites, workers in his kingdom. Significa que son de, de, debimos de haber sido levitas para su reino. Counting is also about being an army for the Lord. Contar también significa que debemos ser un ejército para el Señor. Think about this, everybody. Piensa acerca de esto. If we were doing our job well, si estuviéramos cumpliendo con nuestro trabajo muy bien, we wouldn't have a government that is evil. No tendríamos un gobierno que es malvado. We would not be living in communist New Jersey. No estuviéramos viviendo en New Jersey comunista. Okay. And people saying, well, you're, you got Beth Goim in New Jersey. Y la gente dirá, tenés, tú tienes Beth Goim en, en New Jersey. Yeah, well, Lot was in Sodom until the Lord took him out of that. Bueno, Lot estuvo en Sodoma hasta que el Señor se lo, lo sacó de ahí. So he kept the destruction from happening by doing his job. Entonces, él siguió, él mantuvo la destrucción, que pase una destrucción hasta que él cumplió su trabajo. But here, we're taking a census of the tribe of Levi in Numbers 3, verse 15. Pero aquí estamos tomando un censo acerca de la, de la tribu de Levi. We're supposed to be a, an army of workers for the kingdom. Significa que debía de haber una, un ejército de trabajadores para el reino. We're supposed to be counted for God's army. Debíamos de haber sido contados para el, el ejército de Dios. Counting is about being part of the chosen people. Contar también significa ser parte de la gente escogida. This is why we're counting from Bikurim to Shavuot. Por eso estamos contando desde Bikurim hasta Shavuot. Not counting from Pesach to Shavuot. No contando desde, desde la Pascua hasta Shavuot. Okay, we're counting from Bikurim to Shavuot. Estamos contando desde Bikurim hasta Shavuot. To be a part of the chosen people. Para ser parte del pueblo escogido. Counting is about. De contar se trata. Now think of this next part, everybody. Piense en esto que voy a decir. That you left Egypt, you left bondage. Que tú dejaste Egipto y dejaste la esclavitud. You left bondage. Dejaste la esclavitud. You left Egypt. Dejaste Egipto. And now you're walking mm-hmm. with Jehovah Elohim. Y ahora estás caminando con Jehová Elohim. So there's a lot that we can understand about counting. Hay mucho que podemos entender acerca de contar. Because you need to be walking with Elohim. Porque necesitas estar caminando con Elohim. 
Counting means you left the house of bondage to walk with righteousness. Contar significa que dejaste la casa de la esclavitud para caminar con algo mejor. Counting has everything to do with purification. Contar tiene que ver con mucho con la purificación. Counting has everything to do with a new birth. Contar tiene que ver mucho con un nuevo nacimiento. What do you mean a new birth? Como, como un nuevo nacimiento. Because when a woman has a baby boy, porque cuando una mujer tiene un, un varón, un bebé varón, she's got to count 40 days. Ella tiene que contar 40 días. And then, then she's done with her days of purification. Y cuando ella termina sus días de purificación, if she has a baby girl, si tiene una, una mujercita, she's got to be 80 days in seclusion. Ella tiene que estar 80 días secluida. Counting reminds us of this new birth. Contar también nos recuerda de este nuevo nacimiento. Counting reminds us of days of uncleanliness. Contar también nos recuerda de días de impureza. Every 28 days if a woman is regular. Counta, cada 28 días si una mujer es regular. With her menstrual cycle. Con su ciclo menstrual. She'll be unclean for two weeks. Ella va a estar impura por dos semanas. Okay. So she has to count seven days from the last day of her discharge. Entonces ella tiene que contar siete días después de su último flujo. And then she will be clean. Y después ella estará limpia. Now let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. Vamos de vuelta a Leviticus capítulo 23. Okay, we looked at counting. Now we're going to go back and look at some other things. Ahora vamos a ver algunas otras cosas. Leviticus, Viacra 23, verse 17. Leviticus, Viacra, capítulo 23, versículo 17. Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 17. Leviticus, capítulo 23, versículo 17. You must bring bread from your homes for waving. Two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour, baked with leaven as first fruits for Jehovah. Okay, now that we have a firm understanding of counting, Ahora que tenemos un entendimiento firme acerca de contar, and why we're counting, porque estamos contando, the next thing that we have to understand about Shavuot, lo próximo que tenemos que entender acerca de Shavuot, is each household must, bring, must weigh bread from their home. Es que cada casa debe traer pan de sus hogares. Each household cada, must weigh bread from their own homes. Cada hogar debe mecer pan que viene de su casa. Every household is supposed to be a nation of priests. Cada hogar debe ser una nación, debe ser una nación de sacerdotes. You're supposed to be workers in his field. Se supone que deben ser trabajadores en su, en su campo. Debemos traer pan que fue hecho con nuestras manos. Not purchased by at the store. No pan comprado de las tiendas. I remember a long time ago. Yo me acuerdo hace mucho tiempo atrás. There was this woman in our congregation. Había esta mujer en nuestra congregación. And um, she was renting a room. Y ella estaba rentando un cuarto. And she didn't have a stove. All she had was a toaster oven. Y ella no tenía una cocina, una estufa, sino un tostador. No, no. So she couldn't... Um, um, make a gallon of fine flour. Uno no tenía un horno tostador y no podía hacer un galón de pan. So she made two little croissants. Entonces ella hizo dos panecillos pequeños. Little, 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 little rolls. Unos panecillos chiquitos. But it's specific that you must make the bread. Pero es específico que tú debes hacer un pan. So she, pan. she didn't have anybody that can help her out. No tenía nadie que la pueda ayudar. So she lifted up these two little rolls. Entonces, ella levantó estos dos panecitos. But, it, you know, I'm positive that Jehovah blessed her. Pero estoy positivo, positivo que Jehovah la bendijo. Because she was doing what he asked her to do. Porque ella estaba haciendo lo que le pidió que haga. You know, she didn't purchase somebody else's bread. Ella no compró el pan de que hizo otra persona. See, at Pesach we can share the lamb. En Pesach podemos compartir la, la, el cordero. You know, if you, you can share a lamb between a couple of families, two families. Puedes compartir el cordero con varias otras personas o con dos familias. But for this holy day, Pero para este día santo, the scripture is very clear la escritura está muy clara that you have to speak in tongues. Que tienes que hablar en lenguas. No. No. 
Let's look at verse 17 again. Leamos, leamos el versículo 17 otra vez. You must bring bread from your homes for waving. Two loaves made with one gallon of fine flour, baked with leaven, as first fruits for Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it says you Tú. from your home. Dice, de tus casas. Not from the bakery. No de la panadería. Not from the supermarket. No del supermercado. This holy day is very specific. Este día santo es muy específico. That you have to make the bread yourself. Que tú tienes que, que hacer el pan con tus propias manos. I don't like bread. Pero no me gusta el pan. Yo no sé cómo hacer pan. Well, you had all this time. I told you from Pesach. You got to learn how to make bread. It's not that hard. No es tan difícil. Now getting a good taste is now that's a little bit harder. <laughs> you know, some people make bricks. Algunos hacen ladrillos. Some people make good, good bread. Algunos hacen buen pan. And some people make dry bread. Y algunos <laughs> hacen pan muy bueno. <laughs> Sounds like the translation changed. Yeah. But here in verse 17, Pero aquí en el versículo 17 it's you got to do it from your home. Dice que debes hacerlo desde tu casa. Now, why do we got to do it from our home? ¿Por qué debemos hacerlo desde nuestra casa? Once again, we're going to go to the law first reference. Una vez más, vamos a ver la, la ley de la primera referencia. Hold your place in Leviticus. And turn back to the beginning of the Bible again, Bereshit chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3. Hopefully you're learning something here. We only got another three or four hours left to the list. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Genesis capítulo 3, versículos 17 a 19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Genesis capítulo 3, versículos. Like, why do we got to bring bread from our homes? 17 a 19, como por ejemplo, ¿por qué debemos traer pan en nuestras casas? To Adam, he said, because you've listened to your wife. You've listened to what your wife said. They ate from the tree about which I gave you an order. You're not to eat from it. The ground cursed on your account. You will work hard to eat from it as long as you live. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat field plants. You will eat bread by the sweat of your forehead till you return to the ground. For you are taken out of it, you are dust, and you will return to dust. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, there's key words that we just read there. Aquí hay palabras claras que leímos. There's four key words in the passage that we just read. Hay cuatro palabras claves que le, del pasaje que leímos. Listen. Escucha. Cursed. Maldita. Bread. Pan. And the concept of mortality. Y el concepto de mortandad. No. So God said in Levit Leviticus 23, Dios dice en Levítico 23, you got to bring bread from your own home. Que tienes que traer pan de tu propio hogar. Okay, for Shavuot, you got to bring your languages. Para, para Shavuot debes traer tus lenguajes. No, you got to bring bread. No, tienes que traer pan. See, Shavuot reminds us. Shavuot nos recuerda. That we're not in the Gan Eden. We're not in the garden anymore. Ya no estamos en el Gan Eden. Now, why aren't we in the garden anymore? Because no we didn't want to listen to one rule. No escuchar a una sola regla. The first law ever given was a kosher law. La primera ley que se había dado es la ley kosher. Huh? Huh? The first law ever given... Primera ley que se ha dado. In scripture, en escritura, was a kosher law. Era una ley kosher. Don't eat that. No comas de eso. That's a kosher law. Es una ley kosher. Falls under the kosher kosher laws. Esto cayó bajo la ley del kosher. God said, don't eat that. 
Dios dice no coma. So Shavuot reminds us. Shavuot nos recuerda. That we're not in the Garden of Eden anymore. We're not in the Garden of Eden. Que ya no estamos en el Garden of Eden. Now, why aren't we in the garden? ¿Por qué no estamos ahí en el garden? Why on earth do we got to do laundry now? ¿Por qué ahora tenemos que lavar la ropa? Why do we got to go to work now? ¿Por qué tenemos que trabajar? Because those two bubbleheads couldn't listen. Porque esos cabezas de papa no pudieron oír. But uh, I think there's more bubbleheads than them in the world now today. Pero yo creo que hay más, más de ellos en el mundo hoy. So Shavuot reminds us that we didn't listen to the commandment of Jehovah. Shavuot nos recuerda que no escuchamos el mandamiento de Jehovah. Shavuot reminds us Shavuot nos recuerda that when you listen to someone else other than the King of Kings, que cuando escuchas a alguien más que al Rey de Reyes, you're going to have a problem. Tú vas a tener un problema. Shavuot reminds us Shavuot nos recuerda reminds us to listen to the word. Nos recuerda a escuchar la palabra. And not to the devil. Y no al diablo. Let's look at verse 19 again. Leamos el versículo 19. You will eat bread by the sweat of your forehead till you return to the ground, for you were taken out of it. You are dust, and you will return to dust. Okay? Verse 19. En el versículo 19. We find out that the ground is cursed. En... Nos enteramos que la tierra está maldecida. Well, actually, that was in verse 17. No, eso en el 17. But now we got we to gotta work hard Pero to get our bread. Ahora tenemos que trabajar con mucho esfuerzo para obtener pan. So the, the ground is cursed. The ground that we walk on is cursed. La tierra donde caminamos está maldecida. And someday, someday heaven and earth is going to be destroyed. Y un día el cielo y la tierra van a ser destruidos. See, Shavuot reminds us Shavuot nos recuerda that sin is in the world. Que el pecado está en el mundo. And we must choose to follow the word of Jehovah. Y debemos escoger seguir la palabra de Jehovah. So that we can be blessed. Así podemos ser bendecidos. This is what Shavuot's all about. De esto se trata Shavuot. The third word that I said that we were looking at was bread. La tercera palabra que estábamos observando era pan. And in Hebrew you say bread lechem. En, en hebreo se dice pan lechem. So it's about lechem. It's about bread today. Se trata del pan, del lechem el día de hoy. Where was you, Yeshua born? ¿Dónde nació Yeshua? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. No, it's not Bethlehem. It's not Bethlehem. No es Bethlehem. It's Bethlehem. Yeshua was born in the house of bread. Yeshua nació en la casa del pan. Beit is house. Beit is casa. Lechem is bread. Lechem is pan. That's why he said, I'm the bread of life. Por eso es que él dice, yo soy el pan de vida. So Shavuot is about the bread of life. Shavuot se trata del pan de vida. And that's one of the songs we sang this Earlier. Y esa es una de las canciones que cantamos uh, temprano. I think the worship came up pretty good day, day. Creo que la adoración se de, 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 estuvo bonita hoy. So, Shavuot is about bread, but why bread? Shavuot se trata de pan, pero ¿por qué el pan? Shavuot's all about bread, what, but why bread? Shavuot se trata del pan, ¿por qué el pan? We're counting. Bueno, estamos contando. But Shavuot is, we're done counting now. Para Shavuot ya terminamos de contar. Shavuot reminds us that we're not in the garden anymore. Shavuot nos recuerda que ya no estamos en el jardín. Shavuot reminds us now that we got to work hard because we're not in the garden anymore. Shavuot nos recuerda que tenemos que trabajar ahora con más esfuerzo porque no Shavuot. estamos en el jardín. And bread, now we got to bring bread for Shavuot. Y ahora debemos traer pan para Shavuot. Because we have to be reminded that we were disobedient. Porque tenemos que ser recordados que nosotros éramos desobedientes. What we did before we left the garden, we got to be reminded. Y lo que hicimos antes de salir del jardín es algo que nos deben recordar. See, in the garden, we weren't eating bread. En el jardín no estábamos comiendo pan. Okay, we ate from the fruit of the trees. Hoy comíamos el fruto de los árboles. You know? Said you can eat from all the trees in the, in the, in the garden, except for that one. Decía que puedes comer de todos los árboles frutales, excepto aquel. So you can eat a pear, an apple, banana. Podías comer una manzana, una pera, una banana. 
There were no broccoli trees. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that was outside the garden of broccoli tree. <laughs> it's a field plant. <laughs> came after the garden. <laughs> okay. There were no tomatoes in the garden. No había tomates en el jardín. So, so we're out of the garden. Estamos afuera del jardín. So now we got to bring this bread for Shavuot. Y tenemos que traer este pan para Shavuot. Now bringing bread for Shavuot. Ahora traer pan para Shavuot. Reminds uh, each household. Recuerda a casa a cada hogar. That you got to keep the word. Que tú tienes que observar la palabra. The word of the king. La palabra del rey. Before all things. Antes de cualquier cosa. Now what do you, now what else does the bread remind us? ¿Y qué más nos recuerda el pan? This is an interesting one. Este es algo muy interesante. Bread reminds us that we're mortal. El pan nos recuerda que, estamos, que somos mortales. Because we were immortal in the garden. Porque éramos inmortales en el jardín. But Shavuot reminds us that you can be immortal if you are righteous on the last day. Pero Shavuot nos recuerda que tú puedes ser inmortal si vives una vida justa. Hasta el último día. Bread reminds us El pan nos recuerda that before we left the garden, que antes de irnos de salir del jardín, we were supposed to live forever. Se suponía que debíamos vivir por siempre. Bread reminds us El pan nos recuerda that we listen to Satan over Jehovah. Que escuchamos a Satanás por, por sobre Jehovah. This is why we have a bread offering every Shabbat. Por eso es que tenemos la ofrenda de pan cada Shabbat. Think about it, everybody. Piénsenlo. Jehovah wants to remind us every single week. Jehovah nos quiere recordar cada semana. When we pray as a as a group. Cuando oramos como grupo. We lift up the bread and we say the mozi over the bread. Y cuando levantamos el pan y decimos la jamozi con el pan. He's trying to remind us nos está tratando de recordar every single Shabbat, cada Shabbat to listen to him over Satan. Que le escuchemos a él en lugar de Satanás. This is why when we're in congregation Por esa razón es que cuando estamos en la congregación, I asked everybody to turn off their phones les pido a todos que apaguen sus teléfonos. so that you can listen to the word of God all day long. Así tú puedes escuchar la palabra de Dios todo el día. So every Shabbat, it's about shutting off the world. Cada Shabbat se trata de desconectarse del mundo. But Shavuot is really another time about the bread. Pero Shavuot es otro pan realmente, otro día que se, realmente que se trata del pan. About listening to Jehovah over Satan. Acerca de escuchar a Jehovah en lugar de Satanás. And Shavuot is about listening to Jehovah. Shavuot se trata acerca de escuchar a Jehovah. Because we had to leave his house because we didn't listen to him. Porque tuvimos que dejar su casa porque no lo escuchamos a él. Let's go to Bereshit 3, verse 19 again. Vamos a Génesis 3, versículo 19. You eat bread by the sweat of your forehead till you return to the ground. For you were taken out of it. You were dust. And you will return to dust. Amen? Amen. So Shavuot reminds us once again that we're mortal. Shavuot nos recuerda una vez más que somos mortales. And that this life will end one day. Y que esta vida terminará un día. And there's going to be judgment on the last day. Y que va a haber juicio en el último día. Let's go to Genesis 18, Bereshit 18. Vámonos a Genesis 18. Genesis 18, verse 1 through 5. Genesis 18, versículo 1 al 5. Shavuot is about the promise of Elohim. Or your home. Shavuot se trata de la promesa de Elohim para tu casa, mm-hmm. tu hogar. Genesis 18, Bereshit 18, verse 1 through 5. Genesis 18, versículo 1 al 5. Genesis 18, verse 1 through 5. Genesis 18, versículo 1 al 5. Jehovah appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. He sat in the entrance to the tent of his tent during the heat of the day. 
He raised his eyes and looked, and there in front of him stood three men. On seeing them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, prostrated himself on the ground, and said, My Lord, I deny if I have found favor in your sight, please don't leave your servant. Please let me send for some water so that you can wash your feet and rest under the tree. Now bring a piece of bread. Now that you have come to your servant, refresh yourselves before going on. Very well, they replied to what you have said. Amen. So we got some key words that we're looking at in this in the next passage. In este pasaje tenemos varias palabras claves que we're estamos observando. We're going to look at Jehovah appearing. Vamos a ver acerca de Jehovah apareciéndose. We got the three men or Elohim. Tenemos de los tres hombres Elohim. We got welcoming them into your home with bread. Nos estamos uh, dando la bienvenida al hogar con, con pan. Okay. Jehovah Elohim appeared to Abraham at his home. Jehovah Elohim se apareció a Abraham en su casa. Jehovah Elohim appeared to Abraham at his home to bless him. Jehovah Elohim se apareció en la casa de Abraham para bendecirlo. So that's one thing that's beautiful about today and being separated. Jehovah Elohim will appear at your home. Jehovah Elohim aparecerá en tu casa. Hmm. To bless you. Para bendecirte. Now, Abraham, he welcomed them into his home with humbleness. Ahora, eh, Abraham recibe a Elohim con humildad. He bowed and prostrated to them. Él se inclinó y se postró enfrente de ellos. He gave them bread to eat. Y les dio pan para comer. While he waited for the offering. Mientras estaba esperando por la ofrenda. So important about that, everybody. Es tan importante acerca de eso. See, we're having bread to eat. Estamos teniendo pan para comer. While we're waiting for the seventh month for the offering. Mientras estamos esperando por el séptimo mes para la ofrenda. Bread is to eat while you wait for the offering. El pan es para que comas mientras esperas la ofrenda. He gave them bread at his house. Les entregó pan en su casa. He gave the father, the son, and the Ruach HaKodesh bread to eat. Le dio al padre, al hijo y al Ruach HaKodesh pan para comer. At his own house. En su propia casa. Maybe Jehovah Elohim is trying to see what you're going to do today. Are you going to welcome him into your house? Vas a darle la bienvenida en tu hogar. Now, he goes to Abraham's house and he welcomes them. Ahora, él va a la casa de Abraham y les da la bienvenida. But what's going to happen after he leaves Abraham's house? Pero qué va a pasar cuando deje, se vaya de la casa de Abraham? The Ruach and Yeshua are going to go to Sodom and Amora. Yeshua y el Ruach van a, se están encaminando a, a Sodoma. And destruction is going to follow for those that don't keep the commandments. Y la destrucción va a caer para aquellos que no guardan los mandamientos. So you have an opportunity today to welcome Jehovah into your home. Or you can not welcome him in and, you know, Saddam and Amor is just around the corner here in America. You know, they were having, a, and they're still having some stuff going on in Newark today. Not more than... Two or three miles from where we are right now. No tan lejos de nosotros. Oh, they're on the other side of North? Well, it's six miles to where they are. Yeah. I used to drive that six it's six miles from where we are. Seis millas de donde yeah, it's on the other side. Because yeah. North touches Bloomfield. Yeah. That, that's that's a mile where your your my wonderful sister Rhonda lives. <laughs> well, it's down by the university. So okay, so it's, it's it's the other side. I'm getting Commentary here on today's lesson. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not. Okay. So, but when you don't have the commandments, <laughs> then you get destroyed. <laughs> but remember, Jehovah always keeps his promises. Now, why do you want to? voluntarily 
do this. ¿Por qué quieres voluntariamente hacer esto? So Jehovah is not going to force you to do any of this. Jehovah no te va a forzar a hacer nada de esto. Now we're going to go on the theme number two. Vamos a ver el tema número dos. The true understanding what this means now. Like el, why are we doing it now? El verdadero entendimiento de lo que significa ahora y por qué lo hacemos ahora. Turn to Deverine, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Vámonos a Deuteronomio capítulo 16. Deuteronomy, Deverine 16, verse 10 and 11. Vamos a Deuteronomio capítulo 16, versículos 10 y 11. Deuteronomy 16, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomio 16, versículo 10 and 11. 10 y 11. When you turn it on, I'm going to get me some more water. Hopefully everybody's learning a lot about Shavuot. Espero que estén aprendiendo de Shavuot. Deuteronomy, Devarim 16, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy 16, verse 10 and 11. Let me just get a drink before I read that. Deuteronomy 16, verse 10, 11 says, Deuteronomy 16, verses 10 y 11 dice, You observe the festival of Shavuot for Jehovah your Elohim with a voluntary offering, which you are to give in accordance with the degree in which Jehovah your Elohim has prospered you. You are to rejoice in the presence of Jehovah your Elohim, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female slaves, the Levayim living in your towns, and the foreigners, orphans, and widows living among you, the place where Jehovah your Elohim would choose to have his name live. The only way to fully understand why Jehovah wants everyone listed there to be celebrating this day. La única manera de entender que Jehovah quería que todos los que estaban nombrando celebren este día. Like, why does it, you know, we, we listed a whole bunch of people in verse 11. Porque en el versículo 11 se está nombrando a varias personas. Look at verse 11 again. Leamos el versículo 11 otra vez. You to rejoice in the presence of Jehovah your Elohim, you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female slaves, the Levayim living in your towns, and the foreigners, orphans, and widows living among you, in the place where Jehovah your Elohim will choose to have his name live. Okay, the only, the only way we can understand that passage in verse 11 La única manera que podemos entender el pasaje, el pasaje del versículo 11. Because we have Jews and Gentiles rejoicing in the presence of Jehovah. Porque tenemos a judío y gentil regocijándose en la presencia de Jehovah. Because the word foreigner there is goyim. Porque la palabra extranjero ahí es goyim. So it's not just the Jews. No es solo los judíos. The only way to understand that is to get an overview of the Exodus and the giving of Torah. Lo único que para poder entender esto tenemos que leer una revisión de la de Exodus. Because this is a, the part where the rabbis don't want you to read this. Porque esta es la parte que los rabinos no quieren que leas. They don't want you to read this, and this is why Jehovah birth Beth Goyim. Por el, los rabinos no quieren que leas esto, por eso es que Jehovah creó a Beth Goyim. You know, because you gotta you gotta understand Exodus and the giving of Torah. Porque tienes que entender Exodus y la entrega de la Torah. How we had to leave pagan slavery. Como tuvimos que dejar la, la, la esclavitud pagana. And we were we were living as slaves in Egypt. Estábamos viviendo como esclavos en Egipto. Real slaves. Verdaderos esclavos. You know, people cheapen slavery. La gente. Uh, they make it not what it really is. You know, a lot of the signs I was seeing in those demonstrations over the last 48 hours. Muchos de los letreros que leo de estas demostraciones de que está que han pasado en las últimas 48 horas. You know, the people were saying 400 years of slavery. La gente escribe 400 años de esclavitud. When you're making money for yourself, that, that that means you're not a slave. Cuando estás haciendo dinero para ti, significa eso no es esclavitud. The people in North Korea are they're living in North Korea. They're slaves. La gente que vive en Corea del Norte son esclavos. You know the the Hebrews 
In Egypt, we're slaves. We weren't getting paid. Los hebreos en Egipto eran esclavos. No nos estaban pagando. We, we weren't getting money from the government. No estábamos recibiendo dinero del gobierno. We didn't have our WIC card and our, our SNAP card. No teníamos nuestras tarjetas de beneficios del gobierno. You know, the government doesn't pay for slaves. El gobierno no paga los esclavos. Okay. So, you know, here... Leaving Egypt, we left slavery to walk with God. Cuando dejamos Egipto, dejamos esclavitud para seguir a Dios. Okay, you choose to walk with Jehovah. Tú escogiste caminar con Jehovah. You choose to receive his word. Tú escoges recibir su palabra. And apply it. You choose to apply it or not apply it. Tú escoges el aplicarla o no. So Shavuot is about that we've left Egypt. Shavuot significa que dejamos Egipto. And now it's saying the Jews and the Gentiles, you know, you let them, you know, what did it say there in verse 11? Leamos el versículo 11. You rejoice in the presence of Jehovah, Jews and Gentiles. Dice que los judíos y los gentiles estaban re regocijando en la presencia de Jehovah. I go back to now to Exodus 12, verse 1 through 6. Ahora vamos a leer Exodus capítulo 12, versículo 1 al 6. Okay, we got to understand how we get here. Nosotros tenemos que entender cómo es que llegamos aquí. And who's to rejoice in the presence of Jehovah? Y quién debe regocijarse en la presencia de Jehovah? <coughs> now this is going to lead up to why we're here for Shavuot. Esto nos va a llevar a, a, a entender por qué estamos aquí en Shavuot. But you got to lead up to this day. You got to understand who's there. Pero tienes que llegar a este día a entender quién está ahí. Exodus, Shemot, Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 through 6. Exodus, capítulo 12, versículos 1 al 6. Jehovah spoke to Moshe and Aaron in the land of Egypt. He said, you are to begin your calendar with this year, uh, with this month. It will be the first of the month of the year for you. Speak to all the assembly of Israel and say on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb or kid for his family, one per household, except that if the household is too small for the whole lamb or kid, and he and his next door neighbor should share one, dividing it in portion to the number uh, number of people eating it. Your animal must be without defect, male in its first year. You may choose it from the either the sheep or the goats, or to keep it until the 14th day of the month, and then the entire assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter it at dusk. Let's look at verse 6 again. Leamos el versículo 6 otra vez. Verse 6. Versículo 6. Okay. You are to keep it until the 14th day of the month and the entire assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter at dusk. Okay, so we have a specific date for Pesach. Tenemos una fecha específica para la Pascua. Everybody is to kill the lamb at dusk. Every household is to kill the lamb at dusk. Toda casa debe, debe matar o degollar el, el animal al atardecer. Now, okay, what does this have to deal with Shavuot? ¿Qué tiene esto que ver con Shavuot? Don't worry, we're getting there. No te preocupes que vamos a llegar allá. Okay, because we got to see if the holy days are for Jew and Gentile. Porque tenemos primero que saber si los días santos son para judío y gentil. Let's look at verse 43 and 44, Exodus 12, verse 43 and 44. Ahora vamos a leer Exodus capítulo 12, versículos 43 y 44. Jehovah said to Moshe and Aaron, this is a regulation for Pesach, the Pesach lamb. No foreigner is to eat it. But if anyone has a slave he bought for money, when you have circumcised, he may eat it. Amen? Amen. Now, the, the Hebrew is going to be circumcised. El hebreo va a estar circuncidado. But the foreigner is not. Pero el extranjero no. The foreigner meaning the Gentile. El extranjero que significa el gentil. Okay. The, the Jehovah is saying... Jehovah está diciendo that if the Gentile wants to partake in my holy day, que si el gentil quiere tomar parte en mis días santos, he's got to follow my rules. Él va a seguir mis reglas. So here, the foreigner that wants to partake in Pesach, aquí el extranjero que quiere tomar parte en Pascua, he's allowed to partake in Pesach. Él está permitido a tomar parte en, en Pascua. Then you got to circumcise them. Pero tiene que circuncidar. Just the men, not the women. Solo los hombres, no las mujeres. Okay. So here, if the Gentile wants to do what God says, 
Then Jew and Gentile could worship the Pes have the Pesach together as one household. Entonces, el judío y el como un solo hogar. Now let's move on to verse 49 through 51. This is what the church doesn't want anybody to read and the rabbis don't want anybody to read. Verse 49 through 51. The same teaching is applied equally to the citizen and the foreigner living among you. All the people of Israel did just as Jehovah had ordered Moshe and Aaron. On that day, Jehovah brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their divisions. Amen. What did that say in verse 49? What did that say in verse 49? The Lord, Jehovah is being so legalistic. The same teaching is applied equally to the citizen and the foreigner living among you. Oh my goodness, he's legalistic. Él es legalista. That the Jew and the Gentile got to follow the same rules? Que el judío y gentil deben seguir la misma regla. Well, it says only if they are living among the Jews. Dice si están viviendo entre los judíos. The whole world is living amongst the Jews. Todo el mundo está viviendo entre los judíos. Because Yeshua said, I'm the Aleph and the Tav. I'm the owner of I'm the runner of heaven and earth. Well, that might make you want to cry. You might get something in your eyes. The same laws that apply to the Jew and the Gentiles. The rabbis say only going to follow the Noahide laws. Pero los rabinos dicen que solo deben seguir las leyes de Noé. And some people say you're only going to follow the Ten Commandments. Well, la gente dice que van a seguir los diez mandamientos. But verse 49 says everybody's going to follow all the laws. Los primeros 49 dice que todos deben seguir la ley. Verso 49. The same teaching. La misma enseñanza. Now, where do we get this teaching? ¿De dónde obtenemos esta enseñanza? From Jehovah, the Eternal One. De Jehovah el Eterno. Okay, let's move to Exodus 14. Let's go a little further. Vamos ahora a Exodus capítulo 14. Because we got to get to uh, who's receiving the Torah. Porque tenemos que ver quién es el que recibió la Torah. Now here, we read in Exodus 12. Ahora leímos en Exodus 12. That the foreigner, the Gentile, wants to celebrate Pesach. Que el, y el gentil o el, el extranjero quiere celebrar la Pascua. That he's got to be circumcised. Tiene que ser circuncidado. Why would the Lord say it if unless there were people that wanted to celebrate the Pesach? Porque el Señor diría esto a no ser que haya gente que quería celebrar la Pascua. Now we move to Exodus 14, verse 13 and 14. Ahora vamos a leer Exodus 14, versículos 13 y 14. Moisha answered the people, stop being so fearful. Remain steady. Uh, and you will see how Jehovah... Is going to save you. He will do it today. Today you have seen the Egyptians, but uh, you will never see them again. Jehovah will do battle for you. Just calm yourselves down. Okay, so the mixed multitude left Egypt. La multitud mixta dejó Egipto. It wasn't only the Jews that left, and we're going to prove that a little later on. No será los, no era solo los judíos que se fueron, y lo vamos a probar. Okay, and they're beginning their walk with Jehovah. En el comienzo del caminar con Jehovah. And they're a little afraid because the Egyptians are about to kill them. Tenían un poco de temor porque los egipcios los iban a matar. And they don't have the Bible to say, hey, what happens next. Y no tenían la Biblia para que les diga qué es lo que pasaba después. This was happening in real time. Esto estaba pasando en tiempo real. This was real news happening right in front of them. Eran noticias reales pasando frente de ellos. So they were a little afraid and they're, they're learning to trust the Lord. Entonces estaban asustados y estaban aprendiendo a confiar en el Señor. You know, they just left bondage. Acabaron de dejar la esclavitud. Okay, now you got to remember why we're counting. Ahora tenemos que recordar por qué estamos contando. Okay, you got to remember why we're counting. Tenemos que recordar por qué estamos contando. Now let's move to verse 21 and 22. Vamos a leer los versículos 21 y 22. Exodus 14, verse 21 and 22. Shemot 14, verse 21 and 22. Exodus 14, versículos 21 al 22. 
Moisture reached his hand out over the sea, and the oval caused the sea to go back before a strong east wind all night. He made the sea become dry land, and its water was divided into two. And the people of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, and the water walled up for them on the right and on the left. Amen? Amen. Okay. So Jehovah freed us Jehovah nos liberó. from slavery so that we could walk with him as one people. De la esclavitud, así nosotros podíamos caminar con él como un solo pueblo. He allowed all the captives to be set free. Él permitió todos los cautivos que sean liberados. So then we go through the Reed Sea. Ahora vamos a pasar por la mar, mar de los juncos. The Hebrews and the mixed multitude cross on dry ground. Los hebreos y los uh, extranjeros cruzaron por tierra seca. And then the, the Lord closes the sea on the Egyptians. Y el Señor cerró el agua sobre los egipcios. And then we're alone with the Lord. Y ahora estamos solos con el Señor. But we're still learning to trust him. Pero aún estamos aprendiendo a confiar en él. Now let's go to chapter 16, verse 1, 2, and 3. Ahora vamos a Exodus, capítulo 16, versículos 1, 2, and 3. All right, we're, we're, what we're learning is how, how we get to Shavuot. Lo que estamos aprendiendo es cómo es que llegamos a Shavuot. Shemot 16, verse 1, 2, and 3. Exodus 16, versículos 1, al 3. They travel from Elim, and the whole community of the people of Israel arrived in the Sin Desert, between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after leaving the land of Egypt, there in the desert, the whole community of the people of Israel grumbled against Moshe and Aaron. The people of Israel said to them, We wish Jehovah had, his own, uh, he had used his own hand to kill us all in Egypt. Then we used to sit around the pots and we boiling. We had much food as we wanted. If you've taken us out into this desert, the whole assembly starved to death. Amen. Now they're still learning how to trust the Lord. Ahora están todavía aprendiendo cómo confiar en el Señor. Now we're in the, the middle of the second month. Estamos en el medio de la, del segundo mes. Okay, we're in the 15th day of the second month. Estamos en el 15, día 15 del segundo mes. Okay, so we got to understand this counting. Tenemos que entender esta cuenta. And now they're saying, I wish Jehovah had killed us in yes. Egypt. Y están diciendo de si hubiéramos querido que Jehová nos mate en Egipto. Then why were you, when you were slave, you were crying out for redemption. Entonces, ¿por qué cuando eras esclavo estabas llorando por redención? See, we forget really quickly. Nos olvidamos rápidamente. That's why each year we count from Bikarim to Shavuot. Por eso es que cada año contamos desde Bikarim hasta Shavuot. Okay, we had manna. Tenemos manna. Every day the Lord rained down bread from heaven. Cada día el Señor hizo que llueva pan del cielo. And he gave us a double portion on uh, on Shabbat prep day, Friday. Y nos dio doble porción en el día de preparación de, para antes de Shabbat. And he even, he even sent us quails to eat. Incluso nos mandó uh, quails. Chickens. Pájaros. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like a dove. A big Cold. dove. Codornices para comer. It's not a ferret. Codornices, no, it's not a ferret. Okay. So now, you know, they're crying about having no food. Estaban quejándose que no había comida. But the Lord is sending them manna from heaven every every morning. Pero el Señor les estaba mandando maná desde el cielo cada mañana. You know, how quickly we forget the Lord. Co qué rápido es que se olvida del Señor. Now let's look at Exodus 16, verse 4 and 5. Ahora vamos a ver Éxodo 16, versículos 4 y 5. Jehovah said to Moshe, Here I will cause bread to rain down from heaven for you. You've already gone and gather a day's ration every day. But this will be a test whether they will observe my Torah or not. On the sixth day when they prepare what they have brought in, it will turn out to be twice as much as they gather on other days. Amen? Amen. So now the Lord is saying, I'm going to give you a double portion on the sixth day. But each day you got to go out and get your blessing. Okay, now remember, we're, we're trying to understand this so we can understand Shavuot. Now let's go to verse 12 and 13. Vamos a los versículos 12 y 13. I've heard the grumblings of the people of Israel say to them, At dusk you'll be eating meat, 
And in the morning you will have your fill of bread. You realize that I am Jehovah your Elohim. That evening quails came up and covered the camp. While the morning there was a layer of dew on the all around the camp. Amen. See, Shavuot is remember is about remembering. Shavuot se trata acerca de recordar. How even in the desert, Como incluso en el desierto, he provides for those who walk in his path. Every year, counting the 50 days, Cada año, contando los 15 días, los 50 días, you're, you got, you're supposed to be reminded because we quickly forget. Se te debe, debes recordar porque rápidamente nosotros nos olvidamos. And Jehovah provides okay, Jehovah what you need, not what you want. Lo que necesitas, no lo que tú quieres. That if you walk in his footsteps, que si caminas en sus pasos, if you follow his word, si sa, si sigue su camino, the word is for Jew and Gentile. Y la, la palabra es para judío y gentil. Because what we're reading, the Gentiles were mixed in with the Jews there. Porque lo que leímos es que los gentiles estaban mezclados con los hebreos ahí en judíos. Okay, so when we're in the desert with him, don't worry, he'll provide for your needs. Cuando estemos en el desierto, no se preocupen que él proveerá la necesidad. Now let's look at verse chapter 16, verse 29 and 30. Vamos a leer Éxodo 16, versículos 29 al 30. Look, Jehovah has given you the Shabbat. This is why he's providing bread for two days on the sixth day. Each of you to stay where you are, no one is to leave his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Amen? Amen. Okay. This is why there's no cooking on Shabbat. Por eso es que no debemos cocinar en Shabbat. Because he gives you a double portion on Shabbat prep day. It doesn't mean you can't turn on your heat in the winter. The fire is all about cooking. El fuego se trata de cocinar. Not about staying warm. No acerca de mantenerse abrigados. Now let's move on to chapter 19. Ahora vámonos al capítulo 19. Okay. We're going to read a very long passage. Vamos a leer un pasaje muy, muy largo. Okay, we're going to read verse 1 through 25. Vamos a leer los versículos 1 al 25. We're in Shemot Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 through 25. Vamos a leer Exodus capítulo 19, versículos 1 al 25. Because now we're getting closer to Shavuot. Porque ahora nos estamos acercando a Shavuot. And we've got to remember walking in the desert. Tiene que recordarse acerca de caminar en el desierto. We've got to remember leaving bondage, leaving Egypt. Tenemos que recordarnos acerca de dejar Egipto, dejar la esclavitud. And now we're going to read what happened right before he gives us the commandments. Y ahora vamos a leer qué pasó antes de que nos diera estos mandamientos. Let me just get a little throat lozenger before I read this very long passage. Because it's, you know, it's talking for two days. It's kind of dry. Oh, I don't have anything to do about it. Okay, we're in Exodus, Shemot, Exodus, chapter 19. Estamos en Exodus, capítulo 19. Verse 1 through 25. Versículos 1 al 25. There it is. Ikala. In the third month, after the people of Israel had left the land of Egypt, the same day... They came to the Sinai Desert after setting out from Rephidim and arriving in the Sinai Desert. They set up camp in the desert. There in front of the mountain, Israel set up camp. Moshe went up to Elohim, and Jehovah called to him from the mountain. Here is what you are to say to the household of Yaakov, to the people of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will pay careful attention to what I say and keep my covenant, 
then you will be my own treasure from among all the peoples for all the earth is mine and you will be a kingdom of Kohanim for me a nation set apart these are the words you are to speak to the people of Israel when she came summoned the leaders of the people and presented them with all these words which Jehovah had ordered him to say all the people answered with one one as one everything Jehovah said we will do Moshe reported the words of the people to Jehovah Jehovah said to Moshe see <coughs> see I'm coming to you in a thick cloud so the people will be able to hear you hear when I speak with you and also to trust in you forever. Moshe had told Jehovah what the people had said. So Jehovah said to Moshe, go to, <coughs> go to the people and say, today and tomorrow, separate them for me by having them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day. For on the third day, Jehovah will come down from Mount Sinai before the eyes of the people. You are to set limits for the people all around and say, be careful not to go up on the mountain or even touch its face. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. No hand is to touch him. Or he must be stoned or shot by arrows. Neither animal nor human will be allowed to live. When the shofar sounds, they may go up to the mountain. Moshe went down from the mountain to the people and separated the people for Elohim. They washed their clothes. He said to the people, prepare for the third day. Don't approach a woman. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder, lightning, and a thick cloud in the mountain. And then the chauffeur blast sounded so loudly that all the people in the camp trembled. Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet Elohim. He stood near the base of the mountain. Harsinai was enveloped in smoke because Jehovah descended onto it in fire. Smoke went up like the, the smoke of the furnace. The whole mountain shook violently. The sound of the shofar grew louder and louder. Moshe spoke and Elohim answered him. With a voice, Jehovah came down from the onto the mountain, Sinai, top of the mountain. Then Jehovah called to Moshe to the top of the mountain. Moshe went up. Jehovah said to Moshe, "Go down and warn the people not to force their way through to Jehovah to see him. If they do, many of them will perish. Even the Kohanim, Kohanim were allowed to approach Jehovah. They must keep themselves holy." Otherwise, Jehovah may break out against them. Moshe said to Jehovah, the people can't come up to Mount Sinai, Har Sinai, because you order us to set limits around the mountain and separate it. But Jehovah answered, go, get down, then come back up. You and Aaron with the with, with you. But don't let the Kohanim and the other and the people force their way through to come up to Jehovah, or he'll break out against them. So Moshe went down to the people and told them. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to verse number one. Go up, go down, go up, go down, go up. Let's look at him. Remember, he's over 80 at this point. All right, let's go to verse number one. Versículo uno. In the third month after the people of Israel had left the land of Egypt, the same day they came up to the Sinai Desert. In the third month, we're in the third month. Estamos en el tercer mes. So what you're reading about that happened 3,500 years ago. Lo que estás leyendo pasó 3,000 años atrás. We're in that exact month. Estamos en ese mes exactamente. And we're on that exact day. Estamos en ese día exacto. Okay. The third month is very important to understand. El tercer mes es importante comprenderlo. 
because we're, we we started this lesson off about counting 50 days. Porque comenzamos con esta lección acerca de contar 50 días. So we had Pesach on the 14th day of the first month. Entonces tenemos la Pascua el cual el día 14 del primer mes. Hagmatzah on the 15th day of the first month. Hagmatzah is the 15th day of the first month. Bikarim, the first fruit in the first first uh, day of the week after Pesach. Eh, Bikarim is the first day después de Pesach. And then we're to count 50 days. Y después debemos contar 50 días. So when is Shavuot? Cuando es Shavuot. In the third month. En el tercer mes. Now let's move on to verse number three. Ahora vamos al versículo tres. This is what's very important. Esto es muy importante. That the rabbis don't want you to know. Que los rabinos no quieren que sepas. Once you went up to Elohim and Jehovah called him, this is verse three, called him from the mountain. Here's what you were to say to the household of Yaakov to tell the people of Israel. Amen. Amen. So you see two houses there. Ves dos casas aquí. The house of Yaakov. La casa de Yaakov. So that would be anybody that's a descendant of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Eso sería cualquier descendiente de, de Abraham, Yitzhak, y Yaakov. Remember we read Exodus 12. Recuerda que leímos Exodus 12. And Jehovah was giving criteria if a Gentile wants to celebrate the Pesach. Y Jehovah estaba dando reglamentos de que si un gentil quería celebrar la Pascua. That's the people of Israel. Ese es el pueblo de Israel. Because you got a house of Yaakov. Porque tienes la casa de Yaakov. And then you, so that would be all the, as you would know them as Jews, the Hebrews. Eso serían todos como los conocen los judíos o los hebreos. Okay, then tell the people of Israel. Entonces dicen al pueblo de Israel. Okay, that would be anybody living among them. Eso sería todo persona viviendo alrededor de ellos. Or in other words, a mixed multitude. O en otras palabras, una multitud mixta. Let's go now to verse number four. Vamos ahora al versículo cuatro. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Shavuot is about bringing yourself to Jehovah. Shavuot se trata de, de, de llevar tu persona hacia Jehovah. An eagle is a very strong animal. Un águila es un animal muy fuerte. Eagle is a very uh, majestic animal. El, el águila es un animal majestuoso. And this is a reference in Isaiah 40, verse 31. Y hay una referencia en Isaías capítulo 40, versículo 31. Talks about us soaring on eagle's wings. Habla acerca de um, volar en, en alas de águila. That you will not grow weary. You, you won't get tired. No te cansarás. Now let's go back to Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. Vámonos de vuelta a Exodus capítulo 19, versículo 5 y 6. Verse 5 and 6. Versículo 5 y 6. Now if you will pay careful attention to what I say and keep my covenant, then you will be a, my own treasure from among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you will be a kingdom of Kohanim, for me, a nation set apart. These are the words you are to speak to the people of Israel. Amen? Amen. So we're supposed to be a kingdom. Se supone que debemos ser un reino. Not just a nation. No solo una nación. So a kingdom involves that there's more than just a single people. Un reino tiene que ver que no, so, que no es, so, es un grupo, no una, una sola gente. A nation is generally just one grouping of people. O una nación es generalmente un grupo de personas. And we're going to, if you, so everybody can be a part of this if you do what he says. Todos pueden ser parte de este si hacen lo que dijo va a decirse. And you'll be separated for a, a great higher purpose than anybody else. Y será separado por un gran, para un gran propósito más importante que del resto. Now when did this happen? Cuando esto sucedió. What did verse number one say? ¿Qué dijo el versículo uno? In the third month. En el tercer mes. What month are we in now, everybody? ¿En qué mes estamos ahora? We're in the third month. Estamos en el tercer mes. Now let's read verse 7 and 8. Leamos los versículos 7 y 8. When she came and summoned the leaders of the people and presented them with all these words which Jehovah had ordered him to say. All the people answered as one. Everything Jehovah has said, we will do. Moshe reported the words of the people to Jehovah. Amen. Amen. This is how important leadership is. Así de importante es el liderazgo. 
these people are responsible for living the, being, living the truth. La gente está siendo responsable de, de esta gente está siendo lo responsable de llevar la verdad. Leaders are an example to the people. Los líderes son un ejemplo para la gente. And when we have leaders that don't follow God, y cuando tenemos a líderes que no siguen a Dios, then we have anarchy. Entonces tenemos anarquía. Which we're having right now in America. Lo que estamos ahora teniendo en América. And it was interesting that all this start, really started on Shabbat. Y esto es interesante que todo esto comenzó en Shabbat. So God says, tell the leaders what I told you. Entonces Dios le dijo, dile a los líderes lo que te dije. Let's look at verse 11. Now, leamos el versículo 11. And prepare for the third day, for on the third day Jehovah will come down on Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. This is where the rabbis are getting the three days. Esto es de donde los rabinos están, uh, obtienen la idea de los tres días. It doesn't mean Shavuot is third day, three, three days. It means you have to prepare three days beforehand. No dice que Shavuot es, eh, dura tres días, sino que tienen que prepararse por tres días antes de Shavuot. So the Lord is saying, get ready for this incredible thing that's going to happen. El Señor dice, prepárense para este, esta cosa increíble que va a suceder. And so for, you know, you're getting ready for three days. Se están preparando por tres días. And it says in verse 11 again. Y dice en el versículo 11 otra vez. Uh, and prepare for the third day. For on the third day, Jehovah will come down on Mount Sinai, Har Sinai, before the eyes of all the people. Amen. Okay. He said on the third day, not for three days. It's going to be an alarm on the third day. <laughs> it's not for three days. No por tres días. Now there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to do prior to the third day. Look at verse 12 and 13. 12 and 13 now. You are to set limits for the people all around and say, be careful not to go up on the mountain or even touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. No hand is to touch him, for he must be stoned or shot by arrows. Neither animal nor human will be allowed to live. When the shofar sounds, they, will, they may go up to the mountain. Amen. So the Lord is setting rules. El Señor está poniendo reglas. Just like in the Gan Eden. Así como en el Gan Eden. That when you break the rules, que cuando rompes las reglas, you die. Tú morirás. Death is separation from God. La muerte es la separación de Dios. So Adam and Chava got kicked out of the garden. Adon y Chava fueron expulsados del jardín. Because they were not careful with the rules. Porque no estaban siendo cuidadosos con las reglas. And when you don't follow the rules. Y cuando no siguen las reglas. There are strong penalties that happen to you. Hay penalidades muy fuertes que te pasarán a ti. So here we are supposed to be counting 50 days. Aquí vamos a contar 50 días. It's very important for the last day. What's why we're doing that. Es muy importante para el último día. ¿Por qué es que tenemos que hacer esto? Okay, let's go to verse 14 and 15. Leamos los versículos 14 y 15. Moisture went down from the mountain and the, to the people and separated the people for God, for Elohim. And they washed their clothes. He said to the people, prepare for the third day. Don't approach a woman. Why is that there? ¿Por qué está ahí? Why is that there? ¿Por qué está ahí? Now the reference is Leviticus 18 verse 19. La referencia a esto es Levítico 19, 18-19. It's talking about the woman in her nida. Habla de la mujer cuando tiene su nida. Or having marital relations o, with the woman. O tener relaciones sexuales con la mujer. You're going to have a discharge. Vas a tener una, un flujo. And you're going to be unclean. Y vas a estar impuro. So the Lord is saying for three days. El Señor dice por tres días. No marital relations. No debe haber relaciones maritales. Don't approach a woman. No se acerquen a una mujer. Because then you got to wash your clothes. Porque ahí tienes que lavar tu vestimenta. And then you got to wash yourself. Y tienes que lavarte tú. And he doesn't want any of that for three days before Shavuot. Y él no quiere nada de eso por tres días antes de Shavuot. Okay. okay. I didn't make the rules, God did. Yo no hice las reglas, sino Dios. Okay. 
But he doesn't want to discharge. Él no quiere flujos. Okay, so he doesn't want you to be unclean. Él no quiere que estés impuro. He wants the men to receive the command. He wants all the people to receive the commandment. Él quiere que todos los, toda la gente reciba los mandamientos. Because not only the man will be unclean, the woman will be unclean Por, after relations. Porque no solo el hombre estará impuro, sino la mujer estará impura por, después de una relación. Now let's go to verse 16. Vamos a leer el versículo 16. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder, lightning, and a thick cloud on the mountain. When the shofar blast, then the shofar blast sounded so loudly that all the people in the camp trembled. Amen? Amen. Okay. So here Jehovah is doing something for all your senses. Jehovah está haciendo algo para todos tus sentidos. You're going to see things. Vas a ver cosas. You're going to hear things. Vas a oír cosas. Okay, you're going to feel the ground shaking under your feet. Vas a sentir que la tierra tiembla bajo tus pies. He's really giving them everything to remember this by. Él les está dando todo para que puedan recordar. Now, you know, anybody that's ever been nearby when a, a lightning flash hits? Alguien que ha estado, se ha estado cerca cuando un rayo golpea. Okay, and it, you know, and it's close to you. First of all, your hair all stands up. <laughs> and then it's really loud. Yes, muy fuerte, muy, 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 el sonido es muy fuerte. But this was on the third day. Pero esto fue en el tercer día. In the third month. En el tercer mes. Not on the third day of the month, but the third day. Uh, it, it said the third day. El tercer día. Because after the third day, después del tercer día, then it was Shavuot. Entonces venía Shavuot. Okay, so when you read in the Hebrew, it's uh, after the completion of the third day. That's what verse 16 says. De eso se trata el 16. Now verse 17 and 18. Ve, 17 Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet Elohim. They stood near the base of the mountain. Mount Sinai was enveloped in smoke because Jehovah descended onto it in fire. Its smoke went up like a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. Amen. Imagine your picture the scene, everybody. Imagínate esta escena. I mean, you've never been outside of Egypt because you were a slave. Nunca has estado fuera de Egipto porque eras esclavo. You never went on holiday somewhere, you know, because you were a slave. No te fuiste de vacaciones a un lugar porque esta, eras un esclavo. Okay, now you're in the desert with the Lord. Ahora estás en el desierto con el Señor. And now there's fire on top of this mountain. Y ahora hay fuego sobre esta montaña. Now the mountain goes up gradually. Ahora la montaña está gradualmente Mount inclinada. Mountains don't make right angles. Las montañas no son unos ángulos rectos. Okay. So here there's at least 600,000 men. Son 600,000 hombres. Okay. And that's not counting women and children. Y eso no está contando mujeres y niños. So now the mountain in front of you is on fire. La montaña en frente tuyo está envuelta en llama. And you're five foot five. Y eres, eh, tu, tu talla es cinco, cinco. You're, a you're a, a short person. Eres una persona pequeña. And you got this six foot, six foot five person in front of you. Y tienes una persona alta de, de en tamaño, más alta que tú. And then this gigantic mountain is in front of them. Y la, esta montaña gigante que está enfrente de it's, ellos. It's going to look like their head is on fire. Se va a mirar como que si la cabeza de ellos because, está envuelta en llamas. Because you're behind them and in front of you is this person. Porque delante de ti está esta persona. And they're, they're on a higher ground than what you're on. Y estás, están en un nivel más alto que tú. And you're looking at this mountain that's on fire. Y está mirando esta montaña que está envuelta en fuego. It looks like their head is on fire. Pareciera que su cabeza está envuelta en fuego. May, maybe their shoulders and their whole body looks like they're on fire. Quizá todo, todo el cuerpo o los hombros se ven que están envueltos en fuego. And then it's thundering and it's lightning and it, it, it's a freaky scene, man. Y está sonando fuerte y está cayendo rayos. Es una escena muy, muy, muy fuerte. Okay, and nothing like this has ever happened before. Nada como esto ha sucedido antes. You're not reading Exodus because it's happening in front of you. No estás leyendo Exodus porque todo está pasando en frente tuyo. And then verse 19 now. Y el versículo 19. As the sound of the shofar grew, louder and louder, Moshe spoke and Elohim answered him with a voice. Amen. 
Okay. Now imagine how loud this voice was. Imagínate qué tan fuerte era esta voz. This is the same voice. Esta es la misma voz. That said, let there be light and spoke the universe. Que dijo que haya la luz y él habló el universo. Now, after the third day, something amazing happened. Después del tercer día, algo, algo maravilloso sucedió. And it happened on this day over 3,000 years ago. Y pasó en este día casi 3,000 años atrás. Let's go to chapter 20, verse 1 through 17 now. Ahora vamos a leer Exodus capítulo 20, versículos 1 al 17. Chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. Capítulo 20, versículos 1 al 17. Hopefully everybody's learning something. Espero que hayan aprendido algo. Anybody learn anything over here? Están aprendiendo yeah. algo. Anybody learn anything? Vicky's talking. She's not learning anything. She's like Tiffany. She's always talking in class. Okay, Exodus 20, Exodus 20, Shemot 20, verse 1 through 17. Exodus 20, versículos 1 al 17. Then Elohim said all these words, all these words, all these words. I'm Jehovah, your Elohim, brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the abode of slavery. You're to have no other gods before me. You're not to make for yourselves a carved image, or any kind of representation of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or the water below the shoreline. You're not to bow down to them or serve them. For I, Jehovah, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, punishing the children for the sins of the parents of the third and fourth generation and those who hate me. But displaying grace to the thousand generations who love me, obey my mitzvot. You're not to use my name lightly. Use the name of Jehovah your Elohim. Light. You're not to use lightly the name of Jehovah your Elohim because Jehovah will not leave unpunished someone who uses his name lightly. Remember the day, Shabbat, to set it apart for Elohim. You have six days to labor and do all your work. The seventh day is a Shabbat for Jehovah your Elohim. On it, you are not to do any kind of work. Not you, your son, your, your male or female slaves, not your livestock, not the foreigner staying inside your gates of your property. For six days, Jehovah made heaven and earth. The seventh day, this heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. On the seventh day, he rested. This is why Jehovah blessed the day, Shabbat, and separated it for himself. Honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land which Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. Do not murder. Do not, do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. So on this day, three thousand over three thousand years ago, en este día, más de tres mil años atrás, he spoke these words. Él habló estas palabras. Now we're going to look at verse 2. Ahora vamos a ver el versículo 2. And then we're going to read it in Hebrew. Y vamos a leerlo en hebreo. To really get the understanding of it, of para, what he said. Para realmente obtener el entendimiento de lo que él dijo. Verse number 2. Versículo número 2. I am Jehovah your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the abode of slavery. Okay, we're going to say that in Hebrew. Vamos a decir esto en hebreo. Anochi Yehova Eloheha Echa. Okay. What it really says, I am Yehovah, God of you. 
Lo que dice aquí es, yo soy Jehová, el Dios de ti. What he's telling us in verse number two on this day in Shavuot. Lo que nos está, nos está diciendo aquí en el versículo dos en este día de Shavuot. He's saying, I own you. Él está diciendo, yo te, de, tú me perteneces. I'm the one who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yo soy el que te sacó de la tierra de Egipto. Nobody else did it. Nadie más lo hizo. So I'm the God of you, El Jeja. Yo soy el Dios de ti, el Ojejo. I'm the God of you. Yo soy el Dios de ti. See, this is what we need to understand and why Shavuot is so important. Este, esto necesitamos entender y por qué Shavuot es tan importante. Because remember we counted. Porque recuerda que contamos. Means we're going to get land. Significa que vamos a tener tierra. We counted. Contamos. We're going to get descendants. Vamos a tener descendencia. We counted. Contamos. We're going to get blessings. Vamos a tener bendición. We learned about the bread. Aprendimos acerca del pan. Yeah, we got kicked out of the garden because we didn't listen to the rules. Que nos sacaron del jardín porque no, es, no escuchamos a las reglas. Now, every year we count the 50. Eh, cada año que contamos a 50. To remind us that he is our owner. Nos recuerda que él es nuestro dueño. We are his slaves. Ten somos sus esclavos. Okay, now the, let's go to verse number three, the second commandment. Vamos a ver el segundo mandamiento, versículo tres. You are to have no other gods before me. That doesn't read very well. Eso no lee muy bien. Now we're going to read in Hebrew and we're going to go a little deeper into the Hebrew. Ahora nos vamos a pro profundizar en el Hebreo. Lo ye lacha Elohim acharim al ne. You shall have no other gods but my, beside my face. No tendrás otros dioses en frente de mi cara. Don't put anything next to his face. No pongas nada en frente de su cara. If you want to have land. Si quieres tener tierra. You want to have prosperity. Quieres tener prosperidad. You want to have protection. Quieres tener protección. You want to stay in his presence. Quieres mantenerse, mantenerte en su presencia. So he's saying every year, remind the people. Está diciendo cada año, recordando a la gente. Don't put nothing next to my face. No pongas nada en frente de mi rostro. You are not God. Follow what I say. Tú no eres Dios. Haz lo que, sigue lo que te, di, lo que te he dicho. Because I own you. Porque yo, tú me perteneces. Let's go to verse number seven now. Vamos al versículo siete. You are not to use lightly the name of Jehovah your Elohim because Jehovah will not leave unpunished someone who uses his name lightly. Amen. Amen. Let's see what that says in Hebrew. Vamos a ver qué dice en hebreo. Lo tisak et shem Jehovah Eloheha Eloheha l'shav. Okay. Don't use his name as vanity. No utilice su nombre como vanidad. His name should be important to you. Su nombre debe ser de importancia para ti. So don't go, oh my God. No, entonces no utilice su nombre. You don't use his name lightly. It's a very important name. No utilice su nombre así uh, ligeramente porque es un nombre importante. Don't use it as something you can throw away. No lo uses como algo que puedes uh, deshacerte fácilmente. So he's saying, I'm the God of you. Él está diciendo, soy el Dios de ti. Don't put nothing beside my face. No pongas nada en frente de mi rostro. Don't even use my name very lightly. No utilices ni siquiera mi nombre ligeramente. And this is what, the, what he's speaking from the mountain to the mixed multitude. Y esto es lo que está hablando de, desde la montaña para la multitud mixta. Because I'm your husband. Porque yo soy tu esposo. I'm your father. Yo soy tu padre. I'm your owner. Soy tu dueño. And I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage. Estoy sa y te saqué de la tierra de Egipto, de la esclavitud. Let's go to the fourth commandment, verse number eight. Vamos al cuarto mandamiento, versículo ocho. Remember the day Shabbat to set it apart for Elohim. Doesn't say that in Hebrew. No dice así en Hebreo. Let's read the Hebrew. Leamos el Hebreo. Bakor et Yom Ha Shabbat Lakacho. Okay, as you see, I emphasize Ha Shabbat. Dice Ha Shabbat. Okay, that's why you know we're on the right day. 
Por esa razón es que sabemos que estamos en el día eh, correcto. Because we started counting the Bikurim after Hashabbat. Porque comenzamos a contar en Bikurim en Hashabbat. Every week you have a Hashabbat, the Shabbat. Es, es en el Shabbat, el Shabbat. Okay. Holy days are a Shabbat. Los días santos son como un Shabbat. But they are not the Shabbat. Pero no son el Shabbat. That's why the Jews are doing the wrong day. Por eso es que los judíos están celebrando el día equivocado. Because they start counting day one. Porque comenzaron a contar el día uno. As Pesach. Como la Pascua. That's not Hashabbat. Pero ese no es Hashabbat. Okay, the word Shabbat is found one, in 120 verses. La palabra Shabbat se encuentra en 120 versículos. In the Old Testament. En el Antiguo Testamento. And in those 120 verses, 136 times. En el, son 120 versos y 100, 100, 136 veces. And the word Shabbat is found in the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah. 58 times. Y la palabra Hashabbat en el Brit Hadashah está 58 veces. Okay. So now we move on to the next commandment that he spoke on this day. Vamos a ver el siguiente mandamiento que él habló en este día. Verse number 12. Versículo número 12. Honor your father and mother. Honra a tu padre y tu madre. So that you may live long in the land which Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. Okay. So let's say. Uh, Let's see what that says in, in Hebrew. Vamos a ver qué dice en el hebreo. Kabed et abika ve et imacha. Okay. Honor the father of you. On, honra al padre de ti. And the mother of you. Y a la madre de ti. See, this is what a lot of Christians don't understand. Eso es lo que muchos cristianos no entienden. Because, you know, when Yeshua talks about that whole passage that you're not supposed to call anybody rabbi. Porque Yeshua habla, lo que habla en el pasaje, eh, cuando dice que no llames a nadie rabino. He also says, don't call anybody father or mother. También dice que no llames a nadie padre o madre. But it doesn't mean what he's talking about if you read the whole passage. Pero no, no quiere decir eso si no tienes que leer todo el pasaje. Because here the Father is speaking from the mountain. Porque aquí el Padre está hablando desde la montaña. Uh, Avika and Imaka. Avika y Imaka. Avika is your father. Avika es tu padre. Okay, so you're going to call him Av, father. Lo vas a llamar Av, o padre. So you have to honor them. Tienes que honrarlos. Because he's the father of you. Porque él es el padre de ti. You're his possession. Eres su posesión. Now you need to understand that to understand Numbers chapter 30. Necesitas entender eso para entender Números capítulo 30. That the father is the head of the house. Que el padre es la cabeza del hogar. He owns everything in that house. Él es el dueño de todo lo que está en esa casa. And the father in heaven is saying, I own you. Y el padre en el cielo está diciendo que él es el dueño de nosotros. I brought you out of the land. Yo lo saqué de la tierra. Don't put nothing in front of my face. No pongas nada en frente de mi rostro. Don't use my name lightly. No utilices mi nombre a la ligera. And this is what we remember every year. Y eso es lo que recordamos cada año. Because we forget. That's why we talked about the garden earlier. Porque nos olvidamos y por eso estábamos hablando del jardín hace poco. Then he says keep the Shabbat, the Shabbat holy. Después dice guarda o observa el Shabbat como santo. Now we're saying honor your father and mother because they're going to teach you the laws of the of him. Y ahora está diciendo honra a tu padre y a tu madre porque te van a enseñar las leyes de él. Now let's go to verse 13. Vamos al versículo 13. Lo tir sac. Oh sorry, I'm reading English. Do not murder. Okay. No mates. It says do not murder. We say no mates. That is different than killing. No asesines es diferente de matar. Okay, murder is you think about it. Ma asesinar es que pensaste acerca de eso. You plan it. Lo planeaste. And you do it. Y lo hiciste. Okay, if somebody's attacking you and si, you kill them. Si alguien te está atacando y lo mataste. That is not murder. Eso no es asesinato. You can defend yourself. Tú puedes defenderte. The Lord is saying, the Father of Heaven is saying, 
don't murder. El Padre en el cielo está diciendo no asesines. That is the Hebrew word atzak. Esa es la palabra hebrea atzak. Okay. It means murder, kill, slay, premeditated to murder, assassinate, asesino. Para la palabra asesinato es atzak y la definición es asesinar, degollar, matar premeditadamente, de matar, homicidio. Okay. So you're not to premeditate, like I'm going to go out and kill that guy. Entonces no tienes que hacerlo premeditado, como pensar que vas a matar a un hombre. Does that mean we can't go to war? ¿Significa que no podemos ir a la guerra? No, there's a whole other set of laws about going to war. No, porque hay otro set de reglas para cuando se trata de la guerra. But he gave us all this 3,000 years ago, on this day. Pero él nos dio todo esto 3,000 años atrás en este día. Let's go to verse number 14. Vamos al versículo 14. Do not commit adultery. No. In a, in a, go ahead. No cometerás adulterio. In Hebrew, lo tinaf. Okay. So if you're married. Si estás casado. You can have sex with somebody else other than your wife. No puedes tener eh, eh, relaciones sexuales con alguien más que no sea tu esposa o tu esposo. You can't just say, oh, I, I made a mistake. No puedes decir, oh, me, me equivoqué. And the Lord is saying, don't, don't, do not, don't even think about it. El Señor dice, no pienses, ni lo, ni lo, ni, 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 ni que se te ocurra. And this is the Father of Eternity speaking all these words. Y este es el Padre de la Eternidad hablando todas estas palabras. And if you commit adultery, y si cometes adulterio, Leviticus 20, verse 10 says you're, you're, you're to be put to death. Leviticus, versículo, eh, capítulo 20, versículo 10, dice que se te debe matar. That's how strong God is. Thinks of this. Así es cuan, el, cuan fuerte el Señor piensa de esta situación. It's the same as homosexuality that you're put to death. Es lo mismo como el homosexualismo que a ti se te debe matar. You know, this is what people need to learn that God has rules. Eso es lo que la gente necesita entender que Dios tiene reglas. Let's go to verse number 15. Vamos al versículo 15. Do not steal. No robarás. Lo tinov. You shall not steal. I don't no, care what the reason is. No roba, no me importa cuál es la razón. I don't care if everybody else is looting the stores and uh, the cities right now. God said don't. No importa cómo la gente está haciendo ahora de robar las tiendas en este momento. El Señor dice no lo hagas. But then again, if you don't have any morals or values. Pero otra vez, una vez más, si no tienes valores o morales. Let's go to verse number 16. Versículo 16. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. Don't lie. No mientas. No des fa falso testimonio en contra de tu prójimo. Let's say in Hebrew. Lo ta'ane verecha ed ed. Shaker. Don't give false witness. No des falso testimonio. Okay, don't lie about somebody. Well, don't even say a half truth. Ni siquiera digas una media verdad. Well, who's my neighbor? ¿Quién es mi, mi, mi prójimo? Those who do what your Father in Heaven wants. Ellos que hacen la voluntad del Padre en el cielo. So I can lie about my pagan friends? Entonces puedo mentir acerca de mis amigos paganos. No, because it says you're not to do this. No, porque dice él que no debes hacer tú estas cosas. He's given the rules for the Jew and the Gentile, the same rules. Él está dando las reglas a los dos, al judío y al gentil. Let's go to verse number 17. Leamos el versículo 17. Do not cover your neighbor's house. Do not cover your neighbor's wife, his male or female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Okay. It's in, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, lo takmod. Okay. Now, what, what we just read Lo que acabamos de leer. is something that we uh, understand in Hebrew. It's called the ketubah. Es algo que entendemos en el hebreo como ketubah. The ketubah is the marriage contract. El ketubah es el, mat el contrato matrimonial. God says you will be my own treasure. Dios dice que usted, nosotros seremos su propio tesoro. If you follow the contract. Si seguimos ese contrato. At the wedding under a chupa. En la boda bajo la chupa. The groom gives a bride a contract. El novio le da a la novia un contrato. 
he tells her what he's going to provide for her and what the rules are. Y él es, es inscrito está qué es lo que él va a proveer y cuáles son las reglas. Okay, God on this day. Dios en este día. And why we count. ¿Por qué contamos? Because we want the blessing. Porque queremos las bendiciones. We want descendants. Queremos descendientes. We're not in the garden. No estamos en el jardín. We got to work for our food. Tenemos que trabajar por nuestro alimento. Because we broke the contract. Porque rompimos el contrato. And now he's saying, remember my contract every single year. Y ahora dice, recuerda mi contrato cada día. Jehovah says, if you do these things, you're going to be my treasure. Jehovah dice, si vas a hacer estas cosas, tú serás mi tesoro. Let's go to, let's now go to theme number three. Let's take all that. Vamos a tomar todas estas ideas y vamos al tema tres. Another 30 minutes, le minutes left to this lesson. 30 minutos más de que quedan de esta lección. It's a holy day lesson. There's a lot to it, everybody. Es un día santo, una lección de día santo y es mucha información. We're going to take that ketubah. Vamos a tomar esta ketubah. And now we're going to truly understand what it means in the Brit Hadashah. Y vamos a entender lo que significa verdaderamente en el Brit Hadashah. Let's turn to the Gospel of Yochanan, John chapter 6. Vamos a leer el Evangelio de Juan, capítulo 6. John 6, verse 26 through 51, another long reading. Juan, capítulo 6, versículos 26 al 51. Now we're going to see how Yeshua points to Shavuot. Vamos a ver cómo Yeshua nos está recordando de Shavuot. And how we get eternal blessings if we follow Shavuot and Messiah Yeshua. Y vamos a ver cómo recibiremos bendiciones si seguimos a, uh, si guardamos Shavuot y seguimos al Mesías Yeshua. John 6, verse 26 through 51. Juan 6, versículos 26 al 51. Yeshua answered, yes, indeed, I tell you. You're not, you're not looking for me because you saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the bread and had all, all you wanted. Don't work for the food which passes away, but for the food that stays on into eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For this is the one whom Elohim, whom Jehovah the Father, has put his seal. So he said to him, what should we do in order to perform the work of God? Yeshua answered, here's what the work of God is, to the trust in the one he sent. They said to him, New, what miracle will you do for us so that we may see it and trust you? What work can you, you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the desert. As it says in the Tanakh, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Yeshua said to them, Yes, indeed, I tell you, it wasn't Moshe who gave them bread from heaven, but my father is giving you the genuine bread from heaven. For God's bread is the one who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread from now on. Yeshua answered, I am the bread which is life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever trusts in me will never be thirsty. I told you that you have seen but still don't trust everyone who everyone the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me will certainly i will certainly not turn away for i've come down from heaven to do not my own will but the will of the one who sent me and this is the will of the one who sent me that i should not lose any of those he has given me but should raise them up on the Last day. Yes, this is the, w the will of, the fa of my Father, that all who see the Son and trust in him should have eternal life, and that I should raise them up on the last day. At this, the Judeans began grumbling and began and I, grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread which has come down from heaven. They said, isn't this Yeshua ben Yosef? We know his father and mother. How can he now say I've come down from heaven? She answered him, Stop grumbling to each other. No one could come to me unless the Father, the one who sent me, draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. As it is written in the prophets, you have been taught by Jehovah. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. 
Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Yes, indeed, I tell you. Whoever trusts has eternal life. I am the bread, which is life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert and died. They died. But the bread that comes down from heaven is such that a person may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that has come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Furthermore, the bread that will give him, I will give is my own flesh. I will give it for the life of the world. Amen? Amen. Are you getting the theme of bread? Estamos teniendo la idea del pan. What is Shavuot all about? De que se trata Shavuot? Bread. Pan. Let's go back to our key verse number 27. Vamos al verso clave, versículo 27. Don't work for food which passes away, but the food that stays in stays on into eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For this is the one whom God the Father has put his seal. Amen? Amen. So Yeshua is saying work for food that is eternal. Yeshua dice, trabajen por el alimento que es eterno. You mean we got to work for our salvation? Significa que tenemos que trabajar para la salvación. Evidently, by what he said in verse 27. Evidentemente, como dice aquí en el versículo 27. He gives you the free gift and then you got to work at opening it. Él te da el obsequio gratis, pero ahora tienes que trabajar por él. Work for food that is eternal. Trabaja por el alimento que es eterno. That means you got to work on the commandments in your life. Significa que tienes que trabajar por los mandamientos en tu vida. For the food in this life is going to perish. Porque la comida en esta, en esta vida va a perecer. So what Yeshua is talking about in this passage of John. Yeshua está hablando en este pasaje de Juan. He's talking about Shavuot. Está hablando acerca de Shavuot. How do I know that? ¿Cómo es que yo sé eso? Go to verse 31 to 33 now again. Leamos los versículos 31 al 33. Our fathers ate man in the desert, as it says in the Tanakh. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Yeshua said to them, yes, indeed, I tell you. I tell you, it wasn't Moshe who gave them, gave you bread from heaven, but Jehovah is giving you the genuine bread from heaven. For Jehovah's bread is the one who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. Remember we were talking about the manna before? Recuerda que hablábamos del maná anteriormente. And I had to, you know, show you how, what led up to the first Shavuot. Y tenía que mostrarte qué es lo que llevaba el primer Shavuot. Okay. So now Yeshua is referencing that. Ahora Yeshua está refiriéndose a esto. Remember the voice that spoke the Ten Commandments? Recuerda la voz que habló los diez mandamientos. And now Yeshua is talking about bread in verse 31 to 33. Y ahora Yeshua está hablando de pan en el versículo 31 al 33. And this is why we have to bring bread from our that we would need in our homes to wait before the Lord today. Por esa razón es que necesitamos el pan que, que debemos traer de nuestros hogares y meselos hoy. Because waving your hand is surrender. Porque cuando meses tus brazos es, significa que estás rindiéndote. You're going to wave the bread above your head. Vas a meser el pan por sobre tu cabeza. Because if you wave it here, you're going to hit yourself in the face. <laughs> Porque si, te, si lo haces enfrente de tu cara, te vas a golpear. <laughs> Oh, you got to raise your hands. Pero tienes que levantar tus manos. It's an offering to the Lord. Es una ofrenda hacia el Señor. Let's go to verse 48, please. Versículo 48. I am the bread which is life. Amen. Amen. What's Yeshua talking about? ¿De qué está hablando Yeshua? He's talking about Shavuot, everybody. Está hablando acerca de Shavuot. Because he's the word. Porque él es la palabra. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Let's see if you can do it again. En el principio era la palabra, y la palabra era, era con Dios, y la palabra era Dios. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what happened on this day? ¿Qué pasó en este día? The Word spoke. La palabra habló. Jehovah spoke the Word. He gave us the bread of life. Jehovah habló la palabra, nos dio el pan de vida. He gave us his commandments. Nos dio sus mandamientos. Now let's read verse 39 and 40. Leamos ahora los versículos 39 y 40. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose any of all those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. Yes, this is the will of my Father, 
that all who see the Son and trust in him should have eternal life, and that I should raise them up on the last day. Amen. Amen. Why is he talking about the last day? Porque él habla del último día. Hold your place there in John. Mantengan sus lugares en Juan. Let's look at the last day. Y vamos a ver el último día. Turn to Revelation 20. Vamos a Revelación de capítulo 20. Hold your place in John. Mantengan su lugar en Juan. And go to Revelation 20. Y vámonos a Apocalipsis 20. Verse 10 through 12. Versículos 10 al 12. Because he's going to raise you up on the last day. Porque él te va a levantar en el último día. Let's see what the, what, what, what the last day is. Veamos cuál es el último día. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Verse 10 through 12. Versículos 10 al 12. 15 more minutes, everybody. 15 minutos más. The adversary who had deceived them was hurled into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, Hillary and Obama. And they were to be tormented, <laughs> and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Next, I saw the great white throne and the one sitting on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, both great and small, standing in front of the throne. Books were open, and another book was open, the book of life. The dead were judged from what was written in the books according to what they had done. Okay, so you got the false prophet and the beast, they get thrown into the fire. Vemos aquí que el falso profeta y la bestia son arrojados al, al infierno, al lago del fuego. Earth and heaven fled from the great white throne. That's the Father's throne. El, tie, el cielo y la tierra huyeron de frente del trono grande del Señor. That would be the last day. Ese será el último día. Because when it leaves, that's the last day. Porque cuando pasa, eso es el último día. But then you're, ju you're judged. Pero entonces el juicio. Tu juez, by what was written in the books el ju de acuerdo a los libros. you're not judged by the book of life you're judged by the, what was written in the books now we know what the book of life is y sabemos cuál es el libro de la vida. that's the Torah. Es la Torah because Deuteronomy says this is your life Porque, eh, eh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy says this is your life. Deuteronomy de, dice, en 30 dice, este es tu vida. Verse 30. This is your life. So you got to have the bread that came down out of heaven. Entonces tienes que obtener el pan que bajó del cielo. Wow, this is pretty amazing stuff. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Vamos a Hechos capítulo 2. You can leave John. We're not going back to John. Pueden dejar a Juan en no. un lado. Oh, yeah. You can leave John. Acts chapter 2. Vamos a leer Hechos capítulo 2. We're going to read verse 1 through 11. Vamos a leer los versículos 1 al 11. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Hechos capítulo 2, versículos 1 al 11. Let's go to John and make a right. Van a Juan y hacen una derecha. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. Hechos capítulo 2, versículos 1 al 11. The vessel of Shavuot arrived, and the believers all gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from the sky like a shofar, like a roar of a violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which separated and came and rested on each one of them. They were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and began to talk in different languages. And the spirit enabled them, as the spirit enabled them to speak. And they were saying, Yerushalayim, religious Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard a sound, the sound, a crowd gathered. They were confused because each one heard the believer speaking in his own language. Totally amazed, they asked, how is this possible? Aren't all these people speaking from the Galil? Galil? How is it that we hear them speaking in our native languages? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Yehuda, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Pilgria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, 
Jews from by birth and proselytes from Crete and Arabia. How is it that we hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things God has done? Amen. Amen. Okay, this what we're in today is one of the three regalim. You have to, when the temple is there, Cuando el templo se, se aparezca, every man has got to return to Israel three times a year. Cada hombre debe regresar a Israel tres veces al, al año. For Hag Matzah, Para Hag Matzah, Shavuot, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Y Sukkot. So here, the, well, we just read in Acts chapter 2. Aquí lo que leímos en Hechos capítulo 2. Why were all those people there? Porque estaban esta gente reunida allí. Because you got to return to Jerusalem Por, for Shavuot. Porque tienes que regresar a Jerusalem para Shavuot. And in verse 1, it's not Pentecost. En el versículo 1, no es Pentecostes. It's Shavuot. It's Shavuot. Pentecost just means 50. Pentecostes significa 50. And these are all religious Jews y todos estos son judíos religiosos celebrating the holy days. Celebrando los días santos. The believers were celebrating the holy days. Los creyentes estaban celebrando los días santos. They were gathered together to celebrate the holy days. Estaban reunidos celebrando los días santos. So, so anybody says you don't got to keep the holy days, you might want to read Acts chapter 2. Si alguien te dice que no tienes que observar los días santos, que lean Hechos capítulo 2. Because man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of Jehovah. Porque el hombre no vive solo de pan, sino de cada palabra que sale de la boca de Jehovah. Why do we bring bread? Porque traemos pan. Because we remember we're not in the garden anymore. Porque recordamos que no estamos en el jardín. Why do we count? Porque contamos. Because we want descendants. Porque queremos descendientes. We want land. Queremos tierra. We want prosperity. Queremos prosperidad. The word came from God on this day. La palabra vino de, vino de Dios en este día. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the principio era la palabra, y la palabra era con Dios, y la palabra era Dios. In the beginning was the Torah. En el comienzo era la Torah. And the Torah was with God. La Torah estuvo con Dios. And the Torah was God. Y la Torah era Dios. In the beginning was the bread of life. En el principio era el pan de vida. And the bread of life was with God. Y en el el, el pan de vida estaba con Dios. And the bread of life was God. Y el pan de vida era Dios. When we were in the desert, Cuando estamos en el desierto, Jehovah said to us, Jehovah nos dijo a nosotros, He said to Jew and Gentile, él le dijo al judío y a gentil, Follow my angel, Sigue a mi angel, who has his name inside him. Que tiene su nombre dentro de él. Shavuot is all about Shavuot se trata the bread of life del pan de vida called Yeshua. Que se llama Yeshua. Today I bid you a Hag Sameach Shavuot. Amen. 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 Now everybody go get your bread. Amen. Amen. Lord. Brukata Yehovah Elohinu Melech HaOlam Shasa Nisim Levitano Bayamim Hayamim Lazman Hazet Blessed are you Yehovah Elohim ruler of the universe who has worked miracles for our fathers in days of old at this time. Bendito seas, Jehová, nuestro Elohim, gobernante del universo, que obró milagros para nuestros padres en la antigüedad en este momento. Let me go back to my sheet here. For the second blessing, where we take a bite. Prokata, Jehová, Elohim, Melakalam, Shehekianu, Vikiyamanu, Vihigianu, Lasman Hazet. Bendito seas Jehová Elohim, gobernante del universo, que nos mantiene vivos, que apoya el desarrollo de nuestra singularidad y que nos ha permitido llegar a esta temporada. Blessed are you, Jehová Elohim, ruler of the universe, who keeps us alive and supports the unfolding of our uniqueness and has enabled us to reach this season. Final blessing. Rukatan and I, Elohim, Maklam, Hamotzi, Lechem, Minha, Aretz. And everybody wave them before the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now you can take a bite. I'll take a bite. <laughs> I wanted you to take the good ones. <laughs> Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. 
You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way 
to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom. Shalom.